uh, I guess we'll get started. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, we have quite a lot more people than uh, we usually do here. Um, really do appreciate that everyone stopping by um, uh, for this this event. So uh, we are at uh, the uh, uh, doing doing the Reverie Roundtable here, uh, coming at you Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern, like usual. Uh, so uh, we're going to start by introducing our amazing guests um, and starting with our good friend, who I'm very happy to have back, Dima Mama. Dima Mama, thanks for being here, friend. Uh, uh, really nice to have you. Uh, is this the same room, but just like a different camera angle? Uh, yeah, we had I've upgraded my background a little bit, had a, a, an upgrade cool. to the uh, camera and uh, well, it's not completed yet. But yeah, <laughs> slightly different angle. Um, but yeah, listen, COVID makes it really difficult to get furniture okay All so right. uh but yeah um thank you so much for having me on i'm really looking forward to this conversation today uh my name is demon mama for those of you who don't know um i stream on youtube you can find me at my website demonmama.com it's right here on the screen you can see it yourself and we would love to have you we have our own really awesome website chat and uh, we always do Q&A after the stream. So if you have questions for me or you're mad at me or whatever, you can talk to me then. But again, Demon Mama, happy to be here. And uh, Prime, thank you for having me on. Sure, absolutely. Um, okay, next. Uh, everything has changed on my screen. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, thank you for being here, Vadim. Uh, mm. I, great time. Uh, once again, great timing uh, to call on you. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was just um, having a lovely sip of coffee there. Oh, uh, my nice. name is, is Vadim, also known as Hey, It's Vadim. Um, there's a vicious internet rumor that I was formerly a YouTuber known as Creationist Cat. That is a uh, deep state Rothschild laser uh, lie. Um, and uh, yeah, I make kind of videos and video essays through like a lefty, I would say like, excuse me, got something in my throat there it's kind of gross um it's the sort of like a uh, an adult swim style lens i guess you could say and uh, it's a lot of fun and you're a loser if you don't subscribe um and uh yeah other than that i don't know what else to say so i'll just hand it over to the next person <laughs> absolutely and speaking of subscriptions thank you Rivo jack for gifting hot 10 10 hot show and gift subs and uh Aaliyah for another 20 a hot two on gift subs. That's amazing. Holy crap. Support uh, within uh, not even the first half hour. Amazing. I, we, that never happens. Again, I wonder what's different. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, <laughs> uh, we are going to introduce our friend, Counterpoints. Counterpoints, thank you for being here. Connor, always happy to have you around. Um, uh, you are the conservative apple of my eye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, always uh, happy that you keep uh, uh, accepting my invites um, and uh, yeah, and providing me with topics as always. Um, uh, Connor, what the fuck's going on with your hair? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, my my wife wanted me to get it out to like the poofy afro, so like it, it curls and then it goes like out, like kind of like a mushroom. So um, she's trying to convince me to do a man bun. I put a I put a kibosh on that, but uh, you know that's pretty much what's going on with it. So we'll see how long it lasts. But my name, my name is Connor. I do run a YouTube channel named Counterpoints. I've uh, been shooting probably for about a, a year and change now. And uh, basically, I have four years of uh, law enforcement experience, four years in the United States Marine Corps, a four-year degree from, uh, you know, in, in business, history, and art. It was an interdisciplinary degree. I do like to think that I try to be the rational or reasonable, you know, person with a lot of right-wing sympathies. I try to communicate my left-wing and progressive sympathies. Um, it seems like I piss everybody off at all times, and at some points I'll be fighting with people that I don't even, I, I didn't expect to fight at fucking all. So we'll we'll see how this goes. Sometimes it's super chill. Sometimes it's super heated. We'll we'll see how it goes. So I'm I'm really happy to be here. Any night where I get to debate. Uh, this quality of internet nerd on the internet is a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal night. So thank you for having me. Okay. All right. I'm so happy uh, to have you here. And uh, also happy to have this other person who uh, doesn't come on often, but I'm always excited when they're here, right? Uh, uh, they bring the content, if nothing else. Uh, hello, Lecture Fan. You know it's you. <laughs> Lecture Fan. Of course. <laughs> Of course, Prime. No, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm a conservative. I've been streaming on Twitch since 2015. I play games. I'm a commercial litigation attorney by day. 
uh, stream conservative politics. I believe in the founding principles of America, everything uh, that was um, formed the basis of this country, including property rights, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, Second Amendment rights, basic things like that, separation of powers, uh, federalism, um, things like that, basic, basic notions of constitutional government. And um, that's kind of where I come from a lot of the time. So thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming on the platform of a socialist who's clearly trying to undermine all those constitutional freedoms. Um, really appreciate that. Um, uh, next, uh, <laughs> if you have that, uh, if the hairs are standing up on the back of your neck right now, dear audience members, right? You might be reacting to the terror that is known as Doobie. Doobie, thank you for being back here. Doobie, really appreciate you um, jumping in uh, once again. Um, uh, now in uh, wonderful frog form. Always a fan favorite, I think. Um, how are you doing today, Doobie? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I help run um, politics, um, the largest, most active politics slash discussion server on Discord. Uh, and I'm a very nice person. And that's all you got to know about me. You should, <laughs> you should definitely subscribe to, to Prime and to Vosh and to Dylan and... Uh, all these other nice people on here, especially uh, counterpoints. Uh, though he, he was, to be clear, a, a terrible cop, um, but I love him anyway. And uh, yeah, thanks again for having me on. As always. Uh, uh, next, we have uh, someone who has uh, come on my Amazon Lily panel um, a few times. Uh, uh, thank you for being here. Our good friend, uh, Eris. Eris, thank you for coming back. Thank you for coming in a form much more uh, pleasant to look like uh, than Doobies. Uh, I don't know why I didn't think of that, but okay, sure. Uh, how are you doing? I'm good. Um, thanks for having me here. Um, so basically, um, I'm a history grad student, um, and I focus on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but I love all history, so it's, that's always my favorite topic, and I, I love to bring that historical perspective to everything. I think that also makes me somewhat of a moderate in a lot of issues, though politically I can be I can jump from left to right in certain areas. That's why I wouldn't necessarily call myself a centrist, but it depends on your politics. And um, the biggest thing is that I run Calliopian Club. It's Discord's prim primary education server. And, um, you know, and I just would love to have everyone there. You guys should definitely try to try to join. Um, it's a perfect place to meet your, you know, what is this lady called? My my avatar, your your anime goth girl, um, uh, like intellectual bay. And just because we have a huge female population. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. All right. Running in an educational dating service. That's new. All right. Um, I think you can corner the market there. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Eris. Uh, <clears throat> next, we have someone that we all love, respect, cherish, and honor. We have the homie Dylan Burns. Dylan Burns, thank you for coming back. Dylan Burns, um, thank you uh, for uh, uh, sharing some of your time. I know you're a very busy man uh, these days, uh, Dylan Burns, um, but you're here today with us. We really appreciate that. How are you doing today? Uh, hi, I'm Dylan Burns TV. I smuggle arms illegally for the government of Eritrea. And that's all you need to know about me. You can find me at Dylan Burns TV on YouTube and Twitch. Okay, all right, all right. So uh, uh, a, a little uh, trade secret, right? That, I mean, he doesn't want me to reveal this. He doesn't want me to talk about this. It's that he has, he runs the Hippie Dippy podcast at Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern here on Twitch. So definitely go check that out. Um, it's an amazing time. I guarantee you, you'll love it. A lot of big names uh, come through his panel, including me. I mean, I, I've done it before. Once or twice. Um, uh, but, but, but biggest nice he's ever had. Um, but anyway, thank you for uh, being here, Dylan Burns. Um, and last but not least, that's some guy named Vosh. Hi, you. Yeah, you it's, uh, it's Vosh, actually, and I'm happy Mom. to be here. Thanks. Sure. Uh, I'm a classical libertarian. Uh, I, do, uh, I do Bloodborne streams. I'm uh, top ranked in Bloodborne. And every once in a while, I dabble in politics. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, uh, you're new to this uh, game. Uh, just so, just watch what everyone else is doing. I think you'll pick it up. Um, yeah. Really appreciate you stopping by and uh, jumping in to this uh, Shark Tank. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, we'll get started uh, with our first topic. Hooray. Uh, topic one. Uh, religion is often talked about separate from politics. A 
but the two are closely tied. Zionism is, Zionism is rooted in the Torah. Evangelical Christianity's missionaries and anti-LGBTQ positions are rooted in the Bible. Jihadism as a uh, Quranic uh, justification. Uh, how do we talk about politics mm -hmm. while involving slash ignoring someone's religion? Uh, should religion even be discussed? How do you deal with people whose only uh, defense of a perspective uh, is rooted in religion and not verifiable facts? And credit goes to CounterPoints, uh, who's really wanted me to do this topic. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to disappoint you, buddy. All right. Uh, not again. <laughs> All right. So we will start with Demon Mama. Please give us an introduction. Uh, minute long, please. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, I think it is uh, almost impossible to separate politics and religion. Um, and uh, I uh, have a background. I grew up in an extremist um, Christian cult. Um, so I've, it's something I've been thinking about for a very long time. Um, religion inevitably involves politics. There's very, it's very, very difficult to separate those things. And I think that it uh, is, it must be accepted that this is the case. Um, religion, um, despite it's, you know, to use a religious term, it is not sacrosanct. You can't separate this just um, by, in, you know, invoking the idea that this is my religion. It is not something that is 100% intrinsic. These are belief systems. These are teachings that people construct. And if the outcomes of those belief systems are dangerous and harmful, we need to confront that and address it. And um, I, I don't know if there's a way to uh, completely reach somebody who uh, will state their only justification as my religion tells me so. I think that's a very, very tough impasse to reach. Um, and uh, perhaps the only way in my mind that you could reach somebody like that is by demonstrating to them um, that that is not necessarily the case, that their religion isn't the only answer, but that can be pretty hard if they're not willing. So yeah, I have a lot of critiques of religion. While I'm not explicitly opposed to religion, I do think it's something that needs to be critiqued from a p political angle. Thank you so much. Uh, next, uh, Vadim. Hey guys. Um, yeah, I, uh, this is a multi-layered question, so I'm only going to address a certain aspect of it. Um, I do think, I do agree with Demon Mama that it inevitably bleeds into our daily life and therefore politics, but I do think that there are certain kind of measures that we can take in order to kind of curb things. Um, one would be prohibiting the invocation of um, religion when, it, when, when people are on the Senate floor, when people are in Congress. This sort of stuff happens all the time, uh, usually on the right, but also sometimes on the left, um, in circumstances where they're not actually like in um, like a political atmosphere or like like when they're campaigning or something. I, I, I suppose different standards should apply. Um, we could also do away with things like the National Prayer br Breakfast. Uh, I mean, basically, I guess the last thing I'll say is that the right wing and the left wing does it too, but the, the right wing has been, has, has sort of become synonymous as, uh, or, or known as the God Party. They've been virtue signaling their way into that position very disingenuously for the past several decades. And I do think that there are, like I said, maybe there's other things that I can bring up, but there are certain measures that we can take that I think will take out certain incentives or, or not incentives but kind of opportunities for them to do so and i'm and i of course i'm applying that uh to to both parties but i, I guess i'm just bringing up the right because they tend to do it a little bit more so um mm -hmm. yeah i have more to say on the topic but that i'll just leave it at that for now okay thank you uh let's go um counterpoints yeah so i think the reason why this uh this subject is so important is because oftentimes people, whether they're religious or they're, they're secular, they will try to chop a hard line between religion and politics, and it makes it impossible to talk about. Um, I often get it, not accused of, but I often get called, uh, you know, sympathetic to the left, sympathetic to progressives, because I'm okay with addressing the material conditions, but I also want to talk about ideology. And sometimes uh, when you try to talk about ideology in a broad sense, people just automatically accuse you of bigotry. So the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because if you wanted to talk about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, I don't think there's a way that you can divorce it from Zionism or the religious ideology of Zionism. If you wanted to talk about jihadist terrorism, I don't think you can divorce it from Quranic uh, teaching. If you want to talk about Christian, uh, Christian evangelicals and their anti-birth control stance, then you can't divorce it from Christianity. 
Um, so what I'm interested in is the truth. I want to fight it where uh, fight it and find it wherever I can. And I think there's a lot of taboo when it comes to talking about religion and politics. And I'll leave it there for now. And and I'm trying to break through this taboo tonight. Lecture fan. Oh uh, well, I I would say I would start by saying I reject the assumption of, in the question that somehow Christian views are anti LGBT. Q. Uh, most the Christianity that I know shows nothing but love and respect and kindness um, towards LGBTQ people. So um, the other the other thing is this this notion that there's you know these people on the left who you know don't have religion and don't infuse religion into their politics is is preposterous. Uh, for for the left, you know, communism and socialism oftentimes are their religion, and so. Uh, in fact, that's one of the main reasons why communism, one of the first things that communists do when they take over is they ban religion, they ban actual religion. And because the re the reasoning behind that is because commun the, you know, the theory behind communism is that get rid of the religion, get rid of the family, people will then replace, you know, that natural human desire for spiritual fulfillment with communism and socialism and you know that that's that's clear if you look throughout history and why why communists have have always banned you know religion and so i you know this this idea that you know i guess the main view i support is i support the first amendment which means that uh the government's not allowed to establish a religion and it's also not allowed to you know discriminate and prohibit uh religions and so what i see a lot of from people here on the left is sort of a sort of a bigotry against religion um, and and not really a, a view that's more in the First Amendment um, and, and is more of sort of discriminatory and bigot, bigoted. Thanks so much. Next, Doobie. Um, okay, so I think the body politic has been possessed by the ghosts of dead cult leaders who may or may not have existed for as long as human civilization has been a thing, right? In the olden days, uh, children were told not to go into the forest alone because the tree spirits would eat them. Uh, now they're taught, uh, you know, that they can't live out their lives as, L as a trans people or gay people because doing so will have them thrown to hellfire when they die, right? It's just, it seems like a, an old problem. Um, I think that, like, uh, my, my dream, right, is to live in a world where people are not dehumanizing each other, starting wars, over fairy tale nonsense, um, so I think these beliefs should be like, ignored where possible uh, and openly mocked when they get too loud. Um, but unfortunately, given the reality we live in, uh, you know, a lot of these these institutions can actually be pretty useful allies right, when it comes to certain issues. Not all issues, obviously, but certain issues like racial justice, uh, black churches, for example, very very good at uh, spreading th those messages. Um, so I think we need to find a way to work with them. I'm not really sure how to do that when the, I think the, the, uh, the outcome um, that, we're, that we're looking at at the end is if you do legitimize these organizations, um, you end up with a society in which like people, millions of people genuinely believe that if they support a country or that if they support LGBT rights in their country, uh, the scary ghost that controls the universe is going to send hurricanes and unicorns to, to, fuck up, to fuck up the planet. Right, uh, hurricanes and earthquakes and fucking plagues and all this nonsense. So, I don't really know how to work with these people. Um, I think religion in general is pretty disgusting, and you know, I, I, I'm not, just not sure how how I can even like get past that. So that's where I am. Thank you, Eris. All right, so I have a bit of a love hate relationship with religion. Um, on one hand, it demonstrates like the breadth of human creativity and ingenuity, and but. It also can stifle that those exact th same things, and it can be a force for good or a force for evil. My biggest issue, especially with the framing of this question, is that it assumes that religion is behind a lot of things when... I mean, even in the examples that you guys brought up with like Zionism and stuff, right? Religion might be the excuse that people use, but the real reasons, the the core of why things are done usually come down to power. They come down to reactions to colonialism. They come to things that are a little more complicated than just blaming that, right? Like the religion is just like a, um, a bandaid on the real issue. So I feel like it distracts from the main point. Okay. Dylan Burns. Uh, I, I've made no secret about the fact I don't really like to talk about my faith on stream or, or in politics. Uh, but um, 
I, I mean, it, it always seems to come uh, out, so might as well. Um, I found my faith uh, and found my way to religion uh, after my mother uh, killed herself with heroin. And due to the tra tragic circumstances of how I found my faith, the way I, I practice it is um, delved in, in the kindness and kindness being shown to others. Uh, my faith has never, uh, and, and the churches I go to and participate myself with, do not view gay or trans people in a negative light whatsoever. In fact, the, the church I consider myself a member in and the church that I go to to help support food banks is very opening and welcoming to the trans uh, and LGBTQ plus community. Uh, I would I would say to Vadim about the concerns about uh, the church being involved in certain uh, voting or campaigning practices. I would like to bring up the fact that the black church, as earlier mentioned, has been a very, very big factor in getting black people registered to vote and uh and, and involved in politics and restraining that as somebody who's from a majority black county prince george's county who the black church is an institution of if they were automatically just completely barred off from politics and religion was completely barred away from politics i worry about their po po their participation as an avenue to a participation in democracy and i would also say that uh me personally how i use my faith to help others is i i see my politics in the way i am an activist as part of my faith, as part of helping others. I want to get more people um, who, who are destitute on social programs to help them make ends meet. I think that the idea of being like the, the party of family values, quote unquote, with religion can mean helping your neighbor through social programs, universal health care, and also um, being supportive of trans gay people, which I am extremely of, even though extremely religious. It depends on how you use the faith. Um, do you know that about uh, uh, your mother? I'm sorry to hear that, uh, buddy. Yeah, my condolences. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, next, uh, Vouch. Uh, uh, no, uh, no, the Vouch? I'm oh, sorry. You, know, again, you can pronounce it however you'd like, and you'd I probably apologize. be okay. I apologize. It's quite all right. <laughs> but, but, so I, I, I think we have to open by defining religion. Emil Durkheim, a uh, 19th century sociologist, defined religion not as an organized set of beliefs around deity, but rather a um, sociopolitical distinction between the profane and the sacred. And by that definition, our worship of football through the Super Bowl could itself constitute a religion, which it absolutely does by those definitions. By that definition, I think religiosity is an essential component of human behavior. I think humans quite like the sense of community and shared investment that we get from some kind of collective reverence to could be anything it could be a totem it could be somebody who can throw a ball really far i don't really care but uh organized religion or mysticism however you want to refer to it i think generally speaking has a caustic effect on the human experience i should say first off i believe in freedom of religion whatever you want to believe i think that's fundamentally a human right i don't think that anyone should discriminate against you for those um for, for one's adherence to a religion. But the problem is, is that shared political action and the ability for democratic governments to do what's best for the people relies on everyone living in the same universe. And unfortunately, people who believe in a god or mysticism or some kind of other metaphysical thing or set of beliefs, those people believe in a reality which differs from those which can be empirically tested. And at the end of the day, if a person believes that X is good or bad because God tells them to, the, the process by which we advance political aims isn't really capable of addressing those concerns. The shared reality is essential because only through shared reality, only by all of us <laughs> having the same pieces on the table together, can we acknowledge the best way forward. Different people are playing with different hands, different sets of beliefs, different preconceptions about the way the universe works. It's more difficult. The complications get more exacerbated. The equations get harder and harder to solve. And that's my main concern. It is an undeniable historical fact that, generally speaking, the church has been at the opposite end of virtually every civil rights struggle that we've seen in this country and quite a few in Europe as well. The church, by the way of its organization, tends to be a fairly conservative one. There are, however, religious people and religious organizations that have done tremendous good. Um, I think that the human spirit is capable of doing good, regardless of um, metaphysical or spiritual belief, but I think that there are many bad things that can only be compelled through a belief in the supernatural, which is why I'm concerned about the effect religion has on political engagement. Thanks so much. Open to the panel. Okay, um, yeah, I'd like to, just because um, Dylan kind of 
uh, mentioned some or called me out a little bit. I just want to say um, I agree with you for the most part, dude. Um, what I was saying was not that I think that um, religion should be barred from the political process altogether. Um, and I totally accept exactly what both you and Vouch just said about like not only um, it having a significant key role in, um, I don't know, the abolition, uh, maybe you didn't mention this, uh, the abolitionist movement and civil rights and what not um like, like i recognize all of those things i'm just talking purely when um senators congress people and our presidents are maybe talking about uh establishing laws and things like that when they invoke bible verses in order to do so i think it's it just should be something that is like beyond the pale like it's 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 not in those um kind of circumstances it's just not a valid argument to bring that in you know we uh, that's just i don't know maybe you could change my mind on this but it's not I, really I, it's i would say it's not really an argument they're not really making an argument it's rather it's rather that they're reflecting the population and, and in fact if you go back and like you look at for example george washington's thanksgiving proclamation it's almost exclusively about giving thanks to god and it wasn't because you know he was trying to make some argument or political argument about we need to give thanks to god it was because no that's how most americans felt at the time and so i think when you see politicians today saying things about god and and stuff it's not they're not making any arguments or saying it should be this way because of this it's no, that's well, that's what they believe, and that's what a, a lot of Americans believe, and so they should be free to say it. And this this hatred for religion and let's excise it out is completely wrong. And Vouch is, you know, you can attack the church all you want, but the fact of the matter is, is that most of the positive developments that we've had in in terms of humanity has come from religious beliefs, and particularly Christianity in terms of equality, you know, justice you know, fairness, all of these things come out of sort of a Christian worldview. So yeah. I agree that the church itself as a formal institution has done some bad things, but to sort of throw all of that in and and sort of reject the all of the wonderful advances that humanity has made as a direct result of Christian theology, I think is That's, a mistake. So wait, like, wait so I, 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 I need to directly can I, respond. Can I, can I respond to Vadim though? That was, that uh, was kind yeah. Of a, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the the one thing I would say is that uh, members of, like, for instance, Re Reverend Raphael Warnock, right, is somebody yeah. who's extremely religious and somebody who is doing a lot of work and has always talked politics in this church. He has talked politics on a campaign trail, and I'm sure in the future he will incite his faith as a reason to why he's doing what he's doing. And what I am uh, concerned about is if we have freedom of religion in this country, but then say people cannot use the religion, which is an outlook on the world, to influence or have uh, or they cannot bring that to the public sphere when debating these issues that is what i have a concern about i have no i have no debate or no question about whether god should be cited within the laws and saying like well the bible said this therefore this is banned right of course that shouldn't be allowed there's a separation of church and state but if somebody is is debating an issue and one of the things is well i believe in kindness and and on the debate floor whether it's to their constituents or to the public they say well you know they say to help thy neighbor and i believe part of the social security plan here is to help thy neighbor i don't i i don't see how them bringing up part of their background which is them being a reverend in that faith could be inherently harmful to an effect I don't see how it's constructive or that it it, it really it just it, it's not an argument because you're, well, you're but if you're, it's not you're, harmful you ban things that are harmful right so yes well, well well but 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 it it's often it's used bigotry. It, it's often used to um promote I mean like do you know anything about project blitz do you know anything about like I mean, I can I can name so many examples. Uh, you know, there there was James Imhoff who was um, b basically made an argument against um, global warming, uh, and he invoked Genesis and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's done all of the time in extremely disingenuous ways, and it's. It, sometimes these people genuinely think that, and sometimes it's a virtue signal uh, to, to to their constituents. And um, I just don't think that there is anything that it really um, proves. Uh, you, you know, they should be using other types of arguments that are not based in their religion in order to substantiate why their laws are, are or their takes on a certain bill are just. Um, 
because of the fact, you know, that we have a secular society and, um, and yeah, I just, all laws, all laws are designed to be moral. You do I, know that. Morality does not come from, uh, you know, religion. It's, it's, it, it, it can be exclusive from religion. Go, go ahead, Vash. Okay. Lecture fan. The modern conceptualization of terms like egalitarianism and fairness and equality came out of the Enlightenment, which was also the rise of secularism in Europe. The church had, for millennia beforehand, been the most powerful institution in ordaining hierarchy and aristocratic control of the peasantry. It was the secularists who rose up and argued against that principally. The church has, and th this is such an empirical point that you can't really argue against. The church is a conservative organization. Of course it is. The way the, 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 way the church is organized, you would agree with all of this, by the way, if I was talking exclusively in the Muslim world. It's only because we're talking about Christianity that you would disagree with this point. The church as a conservative organization generally stands against social progress. And because egalitarianism, as we understand it, was only really made a social priority a few hundred years ago, they stood against that too, until they had to move with the times. Well, I, 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 my comment wasn't directed towards your comments about the church, quote unquote, the church, as in the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, it was about my comment was directed towards sort of the entire civilization that was based around almost a hundred percent belief in Christianity and people that were Christians mostly in the, uh, you know, with the, um, the Protestant reformation starting in the 1500s and all the stuff that came out of that. I mean, uh, I'm not, I'm not debating you about the official organizational, the Roman Catholic church. I, I recognize that that was, you know, yeah, so a our understanding of, of egalitarianism I'm, I'm is absolutely about, not I'm talking rooted. about rejecting religion and Christianity as a whole and saying that that it was Christianity's fault or it was the religion's fault when it was really what it was, was a really an organization. I, I think I can add some Everything nuance here that said. might be might be useful. Um, when I talk about religion, and I, I've been talking about religion for a long time, and again, uh, this is obviously anecdotal to my own personal life story. That I grew up in a pretty extreme Christian cult. Um, when I talk about religion, I I agree. I tend to agree with Vosh's initial statement that religion is a very broad term, and that's why when I'm talking about religion, I tend to focus on dogma and traditionalism, and these are two things that I identify in a lot in a lot of religious structures that are, in my opinion, very very dangerous. And it doesn't really matter whether you're talking about the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, or many Protestant spinoffs, like for example the cult that I grew up in. These churches utilize dogma and traditionalism, um, often very, very twisted and manipulative, in order to control people's thoughts and behaviors and to influence politics. And I do think that that's incredibly concerning. Um, for example, I mean, uh, there are many, many Protestant cults uh, that exist all across America, and, it, and and also Catholic ones, by the way. I mean, we covered extensively on my channel one of these recently. Um, but there are all of these little spin-off cults that are tiny, but nonetheless are organized and utilize both dogma and traditionalism to isolate their members from having access to any information. They teach them, um, you know, thought terminating cliches. They manipulate them for money. They uh, make them reliant on them. Then they push them to political ends that further isolate them. We've seen this in, I mean, a great example that most people know about that's very explicit is Scientology. But Scientology is hardly the only one. This structure exists in all kinds, all kinds okay, of religions. Nobody, nobody disagrees that cults are bad. You're, you're making a point. Cults are bad. Okay. But, everybody the, but, wait, but the Catholic Church, church is just a point. massive cult. Saying, saying that cults are bad is not some profound point. So then what the We're next not talking about you guys are, are taking, I'm, I'm which is where out, you go wrong, you is you take, you, you take a single anecdotal experience with the cult or you take the existence of all these cults and then you and then you and then you take this next step, which is very prejudiced and bigoted to then say, you oh, because of wait, OK, hold on. Well, I, need now, to, I'm gonna throw I need to isolate this point point. and all of Christian belief and all of these other beliefs that people. No, have no, 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 wait, no, 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 or fourth time you've bitched about persecution against religious people. What persecution? What bias? What are you talking about? 
I'm talking about you guys commenting and saying, oh, religion is terrible and we got to get religion out of public life. And I religion is said the opposite evil and reli religion is responsible okay. for all this evil. And it's like, look, hold, yeah, wait, there's hold, literally hold on, making hold on. bad okay. things, but that's no reason to throw out religion as a whole. So, okay, that's, hold on. So we're, con we're conflating a bunch of different points here, okay? We're conflating a bunch of different points. So all people were talking about, or at least as I heard it, was that historically, <sighs> generally speaking, Religious institutions have stood against social progress. This is a very empirically definable point. As far as I can tell, everybody here supports freedom of religion. Everybody here supports an individual's right to practice the religion as they see fit. I don't know where you're getting this preconception of religious bias from, especially since people have been talking broadly about the effects religion has, not specifically Christianity. Any criticism I levy against Christianity, I'd be equally willing to levy against any other major institution. I don't know where you're getting this perceived... Have you not been you, paying attention to the news over you the just last not, couple wait, years? Wait, news? What? I'm sorry. Are we talking about the people in here? Or are we talking about something you read like on a, on a newspaper? What are we talking about? No, I'm talking about the reality of what's going on in this what country reality? and the, the left's like attack family. on religious freedom what of attack? all kinds. What all attack on kinds. religious freedom? All, for example, well, we, you could take the one lawsuit against the baker, for example. That's just the first oh one that comes to mind. Oh, wait, wait, hold go. on. So first of all, it's funny to me that you That's would speak one. of religious freedom when you were a Trump supporter who literally instituted a Muslim ban. Um, secondly, as for that, I'm really sorry. Religious freedoms don't seem to allow you to discriminate against other people based on their I, uh, sexuality. That's I, their I am, freedom. You want I'm the freedom to trample on other people's freedoms. I'm okay, kidding. another example would be the lockdowns where they discriminated against churches so bad that the Supreme Court had to step in and tell places like California and New York, you can't do lockdowns discriminatorily against religious institutions. Oh, so this is, this is happening all over the country. No, that's not an attack on religion. Those were not discriminatory. No, those were just no such thing as religious discrimination. Their Supreme oh. Court struck them down. They were so discriminatory. Listen, I would just really like to finish my point because yeah, I got okay. interrupted by Lecture Fan. Oh, okay, great. All right, so uh, we'll let uh, Damon Mama finish her uh, point and then we'll Thank let uh, Doobie end after that. The entire, it's really funny because Lecture Fan really <laughs> wasn't listening to a single thing that I said. The, the My entire point is to say that I don't believe that that in like it, religion in and of itself is necessarily bad there are some critiques you could make on a broad scale but i don't think that it's like some naturally corrupting thing or that christianity needs to be thrown out entirely what i'm trying to point out is that there are a lot of church structures a lot of organized church structures that use the exact same tools from the roman catholic church to uh small christian cults like my own where they use highly highly hierarchical dogmatic traditionalistic structures to manipulate people entire generations with no no access to freedom the children of people who are religious are often indoctrinated through school programs that they are allowed to they're isolated from other children these things are damaging and they can lead to uh really horrendous situations like what we've seen in the roman catholic church like the cover-up of, of widespread child abuse and this has been going on for decades, as far as we can tell. Lots and lots of harm. These things can't be ignored or hand waved by you playing some weird, like pre pre prepared set of like dialogue options that you spit out about how you're persecuted for being a Christian. Nobody here has talked about that at all. Okay, so we're gonna go to uh, Doobie, then uh, Vadim, then Aris, then Connor. With his fucking spirit fingers. God damn it! You know I hate that. Um, Doobie. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh... I just feel like you guys are kind of putting uh, like a, you've taken like a bow tie, right? And you've, you slapped it on this religion turd, right? And you're talking about how they, they support charity and they support like, like uh, you, you guys, maybe your specific sect of this cult supports trans rights and gay rights. But the reality is it's been less than, less than 10 years since the United States recognized gay marriage as a right. Right. And the, and the reason that, that took so fucking long is because religious institutions sit on the other side of, the, of, of that battle and use all of their influence to, to fight to fight uh, to fight us on it. Right. So it's, it's not it doesn't it's yes. Sometimes religious in, institutions do good things. Sometimes they support charity. Sometimes, you know, they, they'll support racial justice. Most of the time throughout history, um, right. they've they've been they've actually I'm muted supported myself. I'm trying to figure out how to get something to work for, oh, for who they are, uh, the people who they love. Uh, you have um, states in this country today where children are uh, being put through gay conversion therapy because they've been taught their entire lives that hey, if you if you feel this certain way and you act on this way, you're you're gonna fucking go to hell. That's what religion looks like. You do like realize that it was Christians no. who started the abolition oh. of slavery movement, right? Okay, that, that's great. Okay, yeah, because everyone cool. was Christian at the time. The Christians were yeah. also <laughs> ones doing the enslaving. What, what does that mean? Exactly. 
Yeah. Uh, so in the South, you also had uh, had had uh, preachers preaching that that black people were literally subhuman. These were animals, and therefore, you know, the, the white race w was meant to rule over them because you know God had given them the earth and all the creatures within it. Now this is so. Yeah, of course. Sure, the I Quakers mean, existed. There are also fair, plenty of dude, fucking racist that's really just please, please. Go, go So all, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that I don't no, think no, you guys are being honest about the, the, the toxic. No, 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 I'm not gonna let that fuck slide by. Doobie, oh God, out of all the people on the planet to come out and say, "Wow, I can't believe all this whole sect over here going after black people and all these minority groups." You run the politics server, dog. Your server's fucking full of Nazis. You're gonna come out and pretend to be the fucking high and mighty on that shit. Get the fuck out of here. Come on. Yeah, I am. Uh, so my server is very politically diverse. So this is true. We have plenty of anarcho-communists. We have normal communists. We have fascists. We have conservatives and liberals, and we have every fucking thing on that server. Okay, we we have a, a channel on the server dedicated to a Buddhist monk who comes on every week and does is, does a guided medita meditation, teaches people about about Buddhism, right? From Burma, by the way. I, I think he. Is, uh, I think his internet is shut off right now because of the, the takeover or whatever. So yeah, my server is very politically diverse. I'm very proud of that. So yeah, I am going to be the guy that so that, hey, like say that, talks or like yes, when, when yes, I think, I think the way that you fight these people is you get them out in the open and you tell them how fucking stupid their ideas are. So yes, yes, they, we do have Holocaust denials on the server. And when they come out, they're shit on by everybody. And it's great. I love it. Okay. All right. Let's but go. To, to wrap it up really quickly. Okay. Um, Christianity is a really toxic force in this country. I, I don't think that, you know, saying, oh, you know, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, uh, some of them were anti-slave. That's great. 10 years ago, right, we, we were having to, to fight Supreme Court b battles because these people wouldn't let gay people get married. Right. That's that's the reality. OK, today, kid, children are being put through gay conversion theory because you're fucking God. You're fucking Sorry, your cult uh, tell, uh, has, has taught them, has indoctrinated their parents and their parents before them, and now their children to, to believe that if they don't, if they act on these fucking natural urges that they have, they're gonna be tortured forever by by some kind of like demon. Right? That's pretty fucked up. So yeah, I, I would like to totally wipe out the influence of, of your religion, of your fucking cult. It's pretty gross. I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. So yeah, in the meantime, I think that we should minimize it wherever possible. Okay. Wow, so the, the religious bigotry is strong with you. Holy cow. Okay, wait, hold on. I want to be really, really clear. Religious bigotry means being prejudiced against people for their religion. If you have an institutional opposition to religion as a concept, that's not religious bigotry. That would be like saying oh, a person Oh, I forgot. Is, what does he mean when he says he wants to wipe it out? Wipe out religion as in the concept of religion, not a specific <laughs> religion or a specific oh, group of religious oh, people. That's wait, hold on. Quite charitable. Wait, hold on. I'm a gender... Wait, hold on. Here. Lecture fan. I'm a gender abolitionist. I don't like gender as a concept. I think society would be better without it. Does that mean I'm sexist? I'm a racial ab abolitionist. Does that mean I'm racist? An opposition to institutions is not the same as discrimination against individuals for their individual practices. Okay, that's a charitable view of what he said, and it's not what he said. He was talking about specifically Christianity uh, be, and wanting to clear. wipe it out. Wait, no, let's, wait, let's, let's, wait hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Let's ask them. Did you just mean yeah, Christianity? Yeah, I, no, I mean, I mean, just about every institutionalized uh, institution, uh, religious institution. Um, yeah, I think I think there, there are good things that religion teaches, right? Uh, be good to your neighbor. Don't kill people. Don't steal. That's good, right? But I think all these things can be thought, taught through secular means. I don't think you need a, a god or a demon on your shoulder ready, ready to bite you on the neck and, and send you to hell to teach people not to steal, not to hurt people, right? So... I, I prefer if those things were taught uh, through some, some sort of secular means. I, I think it can be done. I've seen it done. Right? I don't think you need uh, to, to uh, abuse children by, by telling them that there are demons under the bed. They're going to get grab their feet if they lie and shit like that. So, yeah, I, I do want to wipe out your religions. Totally. I think that they're toxic forces, forces in the world. I don't mean that, that I want to hurt religious people. I just think that we shouldn't allow people to be indoctrinated to fucking toxic. Okay, so guys, you, uh, so you want to, you, okay. you want to, you want to teach people about all of these values and principles that came from religion, but you want to get rid how of the did, religion that brought you. Those how did everyone, Wait, you everyone, just established they came real from quick. secular. Wait, how did come from? This is really, really quick. Hold this on, is real quick. On, I just on, want on, everyone on, to remember on, the point on, that was brought on, up. Hold on, please, 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 please. My team has been waiting extremely patiently. We'll get back to you. Why, 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 thank you, Prime. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I want to backtrack a little. LCTR fan, am I saying that correctly? What the hell are you talking about when you're saying that uh, Christians were discriminated against with the lockdown? Um, that was applied evenly everywhere. And um, it wasn't. Nope, it, it was it not. Just, it absolutely no, it, was it, not. It, and it, I can it, explain it. it. Do you, do you want to ask? Do you want me to explain it to you? Because you're asking me a question. I, I can actually I, explain I, it to I, you. Yeah, but I'd like, preferably, oh, I'd want... like to continue what I'm saying. Because... Oh, I thought you were asking me a question. 
Well, I am asking you a question, but I, I'm just kind of emphasizing the fact that yes, this this was this was not. I mean, first of all, there are no. Uh, it wasn't just Christian churches that you know, you know, mosques. Uh, you know, just just every religious institution was un, under the, the 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 same set of rules. So it's 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 not discriminating against Christianity. I mean, maybe tax exempt status to religions. The idea that they're discriminating. Yeah, it's called free. Yeah, yeah. That's because the Constitution says free exercise. Free, not That's tax. Not, wait, free. free exercise of religion doesn't mean you don't get tax, dog. That just yeah, means that you does. don't get. Yeah, it does. No, yes, it, it does. No, it doesn't. That's what you. Oh Have my you god. Have you studied the Constitution again? Just remember, I probably know more remember, about yeah, it than you, Lecture fan. We just brought up the fact wow. that lecture fan. The arrogance, like, full the arrogance throat, is out I full-throatedly supported a guy who advocated a blanket ban on Muslims. The hypocrisy, I, the fake victimhood is. I really want to. Wait, did you wait? Did you know the Constitution I, I agree allows with freedom? Demon of Mama, but, but I, right. I just, I just really like to finish the last thing that I wanted to say, which is you haven't given us one genuine example of religious oppression yet. Wait, can we talk uh, about how least, the Constitution? At least again, Christianity. Can we talk about how the Constitution guarantees freedom of movement, but there's still a gas tax? How fucked up is that? Our toll roads. Even shame. constitutional? Oh my god! We need to. We need to talk. Well, to the, There's some the, clear the inconsistencies. Vouch. Vow, the, the truth is, is that nobody in American history has ever thought to try to tax churches, and so we don't have a U.S. Supreme about Court precedent. We we don't have a yeah, Supreme I, Court I precedent striking down that tax. Every night. Just like we never had, we never had a, a Supreme Court precedent what saying you have a right to bear arms as an individual so, and uh, to carry an actual gun until recently because only recently have extremists and radicals who hate the constitution ever proposed such Donald preposterous Trump ideas as banning guns or banning taxing Muslims. religions so, and if you tax and if you, and wait, if you got anybody you're, you're, to you're institute a tax on a rich, for no reason it would be struck down as unconstitutional and demon mama that's really cool that you like to just uh, accuse people of supporting everything of any politician that they once oh, do you voted support for. The, wait, you did you like support the Muslim ban? Pretty, pretty, pretty childish, really. Wait, 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 wait. Did you support the Muslim ban, lecture fan? No, I didn't. Really? I did. Okay. All right. Thank you. So anyway, I, you're I so. Like hold on. I did support what he put in that. place that was oh. not a Muslim ban, which which. Oh was, wait, wait. But so you don't support the Muslim ban, but you do support eight <laughs> countries that were designated <laughs> by the Obama administration. <laughs> When he did it, when no, when he uh, did it, when it was focused lethal. on terrorism, then no, I had no problem with it. Oh, wait, hold on. Is this is this like a Muslims? I was against that. Is this wait, hold on. Is this like a courtroom trick? Like, no, Your Honor, I don't support the Muslim ban. But when he banned the eight country immigration that were majority Muslim populations that were laid out by the Obama administration, that I was in favor of. I know that not was of upheld any. by the U.S. Supreme Court. Wait, so I don't know not, that. Wait, we're not Court talking about whether that. it was hey, upheld. Stop, we're talking about whether you support it. Uh, stop. Thank you. All right. We got people waiting. All right. So we got uh, Eris. We got Connor. We got Dylan. All right. Eris, go ahead. My comments are from so long ago, so they're not really relevant to the, the specific topic. But um, what I wanted to say from a little bit ago was that on one hand, lecture fan was correct that Christianity has contributed some positive things to like human rights and stuff. I think the um, the first person that called out the uh, atrocities committed against the indigenous people of the Americas was a friar, um, and that was supported by the Catholic Church. However, right, um, there were other claims that he made that were just not true. Like equality doesn't come from a Christian worldview. Democracy was founded by Greek paganism, and the American uh, government system was also inspired by the Iroquois Confederacy, not, um, and they were not Christian. And at the same time, the West's acceptance of equality as an important value, that came out of the Enlightenment, where intellectuals literally hated religion so much that they legit rewrote history and lied just so they could blame, like, uh, things like the Roman Empire falling and the Dark Ages on Christianity. So, like, I don't think it's a fair to just associate those things together. Okay, Connor. Yeah, so um, basically what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remind you guys of the prompt, and then I'm going to make a fucking promise to you. So, so far, I've actually agreed with almost everything that the lefties have been saying, which is pretty much that you can't separate religion from politics, that, uh, you know, religion informs politics. Sometimes that's positive. Sometimes that's negative. Um, you know, it, like, like that, that's basically what I heard. And not only is it our duty to acknowledge that fact, it is our duty to diagnose, judge, prescript negative policy implementations that are, are, are the result of any religious influence or any religion at all. So 
a few uh, demon mama i'm very happy that you and i had a good debate a few uh weeks ago i'm very happy about it i hope that we can consider ourselves good faith participants however a few debates ago um we had a ugly thing where i basically brought up jihadism in general and i was accused of overt bigotry just for bringing up the concept of jihadism the statistics brought up by pew research polls all that kind of bullshit. and on so basically i'm gonna hold you and i'm gonna hold every lefty on this fucking panel to this standard when we're talking about zionism and we're talking about judaism we're gonna bring up the religion and the politics when we're talking about jihadism we're going to bring up the religion and the politics. When we're talking about fucking Christian fucking, you know, uh, you know, uh, like, like the anecdote does not apply, by the way, guys, like Dylan Burns and Lecture Fan. There are biblical prescriptions against homosexuality in the LGBTQ community. Just because you guys individually are from sex that don't advocate for those things doesn't mean that a lot of American religious bigotry against LGBTQ people is not rooted in the Christian faith. Well, it's so a, it's a, I just it's want people to be fucking it's, honest and consistent. I, 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 I'm you're talking about two different things. You're, con, you're conflating Please. two different Please. things there. Allow me to respond. I don't think I called out by name. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to relitigate a previous conversation because I, I don't agree with that characterization of it, but I recognize what you're saying. And for the record, I've talked about this extensively on my own stream. I have huge critiques of all forms of institutionalized religion. There is no uh, favorability or disfavorability granted to any. However, I live in America, and the fact of the matter is that here, um, we don't really have a huge issue with like a g jihadism in the modern day. We can talk about that if you really want to, but uh, in America, we happen to dis we happen to uh, discriminate quite a lot against Muslim people. However, it is really interesting when we have a government that just just ended. By the way, we've what had Biden in here for like uh, like a month. So far, and previous to that, we had Bill Barr, an avowed uh, Christian dominionist. And if anybody wants to know what that means, that means you believe that Christianity should be the dominant religion in America and that people should be forced to follow that and forced to grow up in Christian institutions, was the attorney general of the United States. We have a huge problem with religious influence in our politics. And I don't believe, again, I don't believe it's intrinsic to religion because I don't think that like there's anything wrong. There's all kinds of churches that have individual positive out, uh, you know, outreach and, and all of this stuff. But we do have these highly traditionalistic, highly dogmatic, highly authoritarian um, religious structures that have an agenda that they like to play coy with whenever they're in public. You ask them about that, like, oh no, we are just serving God. But in reality, they believe that at the end of the day, when the time is right, they will put a sword in your head if you don't believe in God or God will do it for them in their belief. And I think there's a huge problem with that, a massive problem, especially when people like that are able to raise, raise themselves to a position of attorney general of the United States or even president. I think that's ridiculous. And okay. unrepresentative and undemocratic. I just, I just want to respond really quickly, and then I'll, I'll let it get back to whether or not religion is a fucking bad thing debate, which is not the debate, by the way. Um, so, okay. So, basically, that's fine. Maybe it's more appropriate in a fucking one-on-one -on -one circle, but at the same time, I reject some of your things like, oh, we can't talk about that. We can talk about whatever the fuck we want, whatever the fuck we want to on any fucking part of the planet, and I will try not to be a fucking dickhole about it. Um, but at the same time, and then also like, I, I take some issues with your jihadism isn't a fucking problem, uh, thing. So, so just to really briefly outline this, Zionism is a fucking problem because it's slowly but surely decimating the Palestinian people. And as a result, a lot of fucking Arabs are fucking pissed off at, at Jewish people. Okay. Zionism is also a problem because the United States of America on top of invading fucking, uh, you know, foreign countries in order to secure oil also supports the Zionist project, whether it's uh, openly or closet, okay? So we catch a lot of shit from basically Muslims and Arabs who rightfully do not support Zionism. As a result, we become the target of jihadist terrorists who attack America and our allies across the fucking world, including secular folk, and oftentimes jihadist terrorists are hyper-religious. Finally, not only that, but the religious terrorism of jihadist terrorists, maybe, maybe we already had like a, a hyper indoctrinated, crazy, zealous, religious, Christian nationalist faction inside the United States. And maybe we've had them forever. But jihadist terrorism and their reaction to our support of Zionism 
radicalizes Christian nationalists inside the United States to be bigoted against Muslims. So right. I'll leave it there, but all of this is religiously tied, all of this is politically tied, and it's basically a 3,000 year conflict that we haven't fucking resolved, and until we start dealing with the religious root, we're gonna have fucking beef for a really long time. Kind of points, everything you just said was just so wrong. I'm sorry, like- Bullshit, no so like, tell me places. how, motherfucker. <laughs> I just, I, the fact that you think it's at core religious conflict is ridiculous. Um, oh. Zionism was Zionism was founded, I'm not a supporter of Zionism in today's society, but uh, Zionism was founded on a secular idea It actually breaks, um, it literally breaks the, uh, laws of Judaism. So for anyone who does know anything about Jewish law, um, the founding of Israel actually broke Jewish law. So oh, it's, and it's explain. and to this day, please, it's often explain. still not supported by the very religious. Please explain because you said everything I said was wrong. And I can't believe that you're literally telling me that part of the Jewish faith is not to fucking at one time the prophecy is that the Jewish people will occupy between the fucking ti uh, the fucking Tigris and the or the Euphrates and the fucking um, do you know, do you and the fucking says, Nile. When do you know when the Torah right says that uh. it says that it should happen after the Messiah comes right? Most okay. Jews don't believe the Messiah has come. Therefore, it's breaking Jewish law in order to found Israel, right? The so the so the settler Jews are just doing this. Okay, so the Orthodox okay. Jews are just doing this for fun. This they, is what they I was going like to say it. about this. I feel like it is incredibly, okay. it is incredibly, incredibly reductive to try and boil down uh, the entire Middle East. And I, I'm sure Dylan Burns would agree with me on this, in fact. Dylan Burns, who's probably the most qualified here on this. Um, but that to try and boil down the entire history of Middle East conflict and what might motivate people to be combatants against us to just religion seems to me uh, very ridiculous. Okay, I don't so ridiculous. Let, me, let me tell you how it it's not. It evangelizes oh, the population. Dylan has been waiting. Dylan has been waiting. Been waiting patiently. <laughs> I've been I've been a good boy and I've been waiting. Okay, so there's a million things I wanted to say uh, over a million different parts because there's been multiple times that my dog my kind of wheelhouse has been brought up. Uh, some of it's too far gone, so I won't touch on it. The first thing I'll touch on is the Muslim ban. So uh, it is true that the list of nations that were put up, <coughs> the majority of them were Muslim majority, but some of them were nations like Venezuela. I believe North Korea might have been on the list, but there were lists outside uh, that did not follow the Muslim faith. Now, if you file, follow the trail of events, this is what happened. So Trump is on the campaign trail, and he says that we need a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until we can figure out what the heck is going on. Then everybody claps and go, like, yeah, USA, right? Then he gets elected. He turns to Rudy Giuliani, and he says, how do we do a Muslim ban legally? And he asked Rudy Giuliani, and this is what Rudy Giuliani has said publicly. This is not like secretive information. He said this on Fox and Friends or somewhere. Trump came to me and asked me how to do a Muslim ban legally. Then that is when the original Muslim ban, quote unquote, was created. You can call it whatever the hell you want. That original version was then rejected on the exact grounds, I believe, of it being discriminatory on a religious level. And then a second version was created, which then included nations like Venezuela. And since it had nations like Venezuela on it, then it got through. So basically what happened is that there was a, pr a public call for a Muslim ban, a private conversation about a Muslim ban. A Muslim ban was created. It was rejected purely on the on, on the level of like this seems inherently discriminatory. Then a second version was made, and that one got through because they threw on some non-Muslim nations. So to say it wasn't a Muslim ban when he did everything possible to make it a Muslim ban and then like skirted it through at last second by adding a few other nations, I feel that would be inaccurate. Uh, now, now, to the other thing, when it comes to uh, the Israel-Zionism debate that's, that's going on right now, I am not going to get, I'm not Jewish, I'm not going to get into a debate about the Jewish faith of the Torah, what the Torah says here. I don't know, uh, Eris, are you Jewish? I, I'm, un I'm unaware if you are. I was raised are. Jewish. Okay, raised Jewish. So I, I'm not going to come up here. There is a large debate in the Jewish community on different sections. There's certain Jews that say, hey, you actually, the Israeli military can't recruit me. There's certain Jews that uh, say, actually, the creation of Israel is anti-Jewish, and they'll they stand with the Palestinian community for that reason. Um, there are certain Jews that think, no, actually, this is 100% within law. It's it's a huge religious debate, right? Like many other issues. Yeah, it's a very complex issue. It's extremely so complex. Just... Uh, I do think, of course, boiling down the entirety of the Middle East, that's kind of like it's the Israel and then everything else. 
is uh, reductionist. And I don't know, think that's what Connor was saying, though. I can't really, I don't think that was, but of course that would be reductionist uh, analysis. The Middle East is the way it is for a lot of different reasons. Um, tribal conflicts, uh, resources, um, power hungry individuals, um, um, they, they, and of course, I guess part of it could be religious conflicts, but there's a million reasons that go into why the Middle East is the way it is. And I don't think just by moving the factor of religion, you, the Middle East would be greatly changed from what it is now. Yeah, if I can, if I can jump in on this, I just want to say a bit, to be totally real. I don't actually think that the contents of religious book really dictate the behavior of his practitioners that much. I mean, you have, let's take like Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and, and uh, the Hindu faith. And like, they all teach different things. They have different holy books, different deities. And what do we get? Christianity has been used to support like white uh, nationalist um, regimes. Uh, uh, you know, there are Zionists who do the same with their holy book. There are Muslims who do the same with their holy book. There are Hindus who do the same with their holy book. The Shinto religion in Japan, they still have a very strong ethno-nationalist streak in there, which they've justified in part with like the cultural supremacy um, that they, you know, base Shintoism in. Like, all, it just seems like no matter what the actual text of the holy book is, people tend to gravitate in pretty predictable ways. I think generally speaking, the actual contents of a religious text are almost irrelevant. Usually they're just a way of spiritually bolstering the desires of the conservative wing of any given civilization. That's my guess. That just seems to be a very accurate predictor based on what I've seen historically. There are still some differences, and especially, by the way, the less you involve politics in it. If we're talking about individual faith or individually practicing uh, one's religious beliefs, then I think this is much less applicable. But when we're talking about the way countries interact, I think that I think it it, it tends to boil yeah, yeah. down pretty similarly. Okay, I, I just thing, want to okay, add one thing. Fucking fucking I gotta go. There's I'm a also, fucking loser. There's also secular Zionism and also Vosh talking Israel first stream back. Very bold. Very bold. <laughs> put out there. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I need to go, or I'm just... a fucking loser. Can I just slip one small thing in, which I do want to add something to what Vosh was saying. It's very specific, which is just that um, I, I do tend to agree that the actual texts of a books of the religious books are totally wild. They, they're often, um, you know, contradictory. There's ways to justify just about everything. In my opinion, the structures of churches and the structures of, of particular organized groups of religion is much more influential. So I do agree with you on that, that the text of the book can be used to justify almost anything. However, if you notice, um, a lot of these, uh, like, again, highly authoritarian religious groups, they will use that to push supremacy. And we see that right now, by the way, in India with Hindu nationalism being uh, represented massively and to horrible, devastating effects by Modi. And then I'm okay. today. I, 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 I gotta go because like, like I, I promise you that I was basically gonna beat the fuck out of you with your own points. So 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 th this is this is my problem. Okay. So you guys all had meticulous, detailed, studied, historical criticisms of Christianity in how it very specifically influences Christian followers and how they negatively act inside American society. Now, I can concede that there's a dualism to most religions. It says one thing, it says the fucking other, you can pick whichever fucking one you want in order to fucking justify whatever. But at the same time, the second, the second that I bring up Zionism or fucking jihadism, it's, oh, hold on a second, you're being reductionist. There's geopolitical factors involved. There's, uh, you know, uh, tribal uh, factors you're, involved. You're There's ethnic funny. factors involved. Are we going to give the same concessions to Lecture Fan right now? Are we going to say, Lecture Fan, it's not your fault that you're a religious zealot. Um, it's actually like an inter-ethnic, uh, very nuanced discussion about European immigration and white supremacy. Um, so, so actually, like, you know, uh, it's not your fault that you're a fucking, you know, like, oh, you're not personally a bigot for LGBTQ stuff, but, it, you know, it's not your fucking fault that the book that says specifically, very specifically, anti-LGBTQ shit, it's just a fucking roll okay. of the dice. Wait, 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 that people like, believe wait, 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 I'm I confused. No, 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 I'm not done yet, because basically I'm trying to not have a fucking stroke over the fucking lack of consistency Calm down, here. please. It's all right. Wait, Be I'm consistent. I'm really confused. Be consistent. So wait, I think that as, as I understand it, nobody was saying... Christianity leads to these side effects because of X or Y in the book. When people were talking about the effects that Christianity has in society, they were pretty geopolitical or pretty like 
Just this is what religion does generally. Okay, so, I so th this is your point. Is Christianity hates the gays because of geopolitics. That's your point? No, Christianity no. allows... Wait, I can explain this to you. A spiritual I justification. Uh, for, I, well, I just want to answer. Christianity allows for a spiritual justification for anti-LGBTQ values. You will see this in almost every organized religion in all of human existence. Generally speaking, religion tends to bolster conservative thought because it allows you to metaphysically defend positions that aren't in line with things that you could empirically defend. I think so that's the case with yeah, everything. I can, I can also weigh in on this. Wild. Dylan, then Vadim. So I would say that when you look at uh christianity and when the when the book was written i think there's multiple factors that came this is my own personal interpretation people can call me stupid they can call me whatever they want i don't really care um my personal interpretation dumb is <laughs> i would like you to cancel care. wash immediately this is why i left the left okay? you said you wouldn't this care <laughs> this is why i'm leaving the left but um the first the thing is i think is partially you know it is the word of god and then man translated the word of god on the paper and if you are powerful individuals translating the word of God. A few of them might put their own personal beliefs from a personal time, a time long past, into that book or into the specter around the religion. There is a lot of debate over religious texts for this reason, among other things, with complications with translations and other things like that. And I think a lot of it has to do with people who lived back in the day, looked at this opportunity and was like, you know what, I can just put what I believe in here. Uh, you know what? Shellfish? I don't like shellfish. You know what? I'm putting this in here, right? I could see that as being a heavy influence on that. Some, a lot of, a lot of Christians, when I say this, they don't like that. Uh, a lot of people that see it's me just like picking and choosing. You can say what it is. You can call it what it is. You can call it what it ain't. I don't care. But at the end of the day, I think that the time when certain books are written or certain uh, things are, or, or rule books are made, uh, the time it was created is going to have a heavy impact on it. And so if you are somebody who lives by the Bible or lives by the word of God, and part of that is saying a certain a negative thing about homosexuals or, or certain interpreta interpretation or mistranslation from, uh, from, one, from one book to another version, then that can have a heavy impact on movements like the gay rights movement. And I think that the religious community has had a very negative relationship with the gay, uh, gay community, LGB community for a long time. And I think in order for Christianity to survive in the 21st century and uh, stay relevant and continue to prosper as a community of love, then it needs to accept trans, gay, and other folks of that, of that sort with open arms. Hog. Yeah. Why not, why not okay. just drop the cult? Like, Wait. I, I, well, wait, I, no, the thing I is, I really I have was... something I want to add. Let Vadim go, and then I'd really like to add something to that, because I really have a lot to say about this. Okay, okay. well, well, first of all, Dylan, um, remember, the you didn't leave the left. The left left you. Um, but um, but uh, next, um, I just, I, I feel like we're really straying away from the topic here, and the reason is, I mean, I, I think we can all agree that the power structures that are just built in America, or the power structure in America, is, 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 is when it comes to religion is essentially Christianity. And that's why we're, we're talking about that. If we were having a, some sort of debate about um, global policy or I mean, uh, international policy and whatnot, it, it would be more relevant. But um, the reason why we're the prompt, the, the reason why we're specifically honing in on Christianity here is because that happens to be the, uh, you know, you're not going to see people like Rashida Tlaib or, uh, can, can you, uh, Connor, man, your, your sparkly hand gestures are just really starting to, uh, they're throwing me off, dude. You Sorry, I'm it's a debate bad. tactic. It's, it's, you gotta okay. be prepared. You, 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 you're, you're, I know, I know, I know. I'm Pocket easily Dan. distracted. I'm, I'm, I'm like a cat, dude. You know, I'm, I'm easily distracted. <laughs> you just put something, wave it in front of me, and I'm just like. But, but anyway, back to what I was about to say. <sighs> you're never going to see Rashida Tlaib or um, uh, Elon Omar. I mean, I, I really doubt it. So somebody correct me if I'm wrong. You'll never see them invoking the Quran in order to justify some of their 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 laws. And there just is not, um, in terms of the Islamic community, I would say the Jewish community and 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 other uh, other religions besides christianity there are not um any groups that are powerful enough to shape our laws and that are kind of um invoked just all the time by um our our major political parties so okay so so, so, so it becomes germane to the conversation in order to discuss specifically christianity within this this whole no, conversation no, that no, we're having no Indeed. counterpoints it's my he turn my friend can I? Oh, fuck no. me. No, you can't. Control yourself, sir. 
Can you uh, fuck me? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we can talk about that. After metaphorically. The yeah, no, uh, we, no, not metaphorically. After the panel, hit me up. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, weird. Um, okay. So the thing that I was going to talk about here is that uh, I do agree with uh, Dylan in the idea that like interpretation of religious texts is what is a wild thing. And I know this because um, just so you know, I've read the entire Bible cover to cover multiple times in my life. I've annotated the cover. I have a Bible right over here. The, the, uh, the, a uh, new study Bible, and it is a it has four different translations with annotations on the bottom, and my notes fill the margins. I used to literally study the Bible no. and try to figure this stuff out. You can justify just about anything you'd like in the Bible it, if you if you know how to do it enough. The problem, the one, the, the thing that the Bible gets used for is it get it gets used as a a bludgeon um, by which uh, people can dominate a community and the way that this happens is by often through literalism is one of the ways that it's done but the funny thing about literalism just like with constitutional literalism it doesn't actually exist it's just people asserting that their version or their read of it is the true version um because god agrees with them and that is dangerous and it is incredibly dangerous when uh churches can become isolated and uh again they will self-isolate sometimes isolate children i knew i've known so many people like god i could tell you stories this is one of the main things i've studied in my life the people who um become isolated from other social groups they become completely insulated to the social group they repeat these takes uh that are taught to them by a leader figure depending on the size of the organization it could be a tiny cult of 10 members to a to a church that spans the globe and they use this as a way of wielding political power and we have to be aware of that and by the way i think this happens in many different religions not just christianity i'm just most familiar with christianity because it's been a huge chunk of my life unfortunately um and not positively in most cases there are many communities that do not exist like this but we must acknowledge the danger of such communities while religion can be certainly healthy and i do believe there are many great teachings that can be taken from the bible i say this as somebody he heavily uh, critical of christianity but also who actually knows the text quite well um there are great things that can be learned from that but what we have to acknowledge is that it is used as a tool to wield political power and that is a problem and we should call that out when it's done and also to grant you a little bit of a of an olive branch connor points i do agree that this happens extensively in islamic uh, organized religion as well i literally just brought up hindu nationalism for a very good reason for that yeah there, there there's are tons of examples of this but we have to pay attention to the way that it's used and the way that it influences politics so we agree okay. religion's right. canceled so Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, that was the, uh, I think, anyways, out of all this. So what we'll do is we're going to go to uh, closing statements on this. You all get a chance to uh, say your piece. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'll uh, consider that yours, uh, <laughs> Demon Mama. <laughs> um, okay, uh, we'll start with uh, Bedeem then. Okay, well, our, I don't know how much I have to say that hasn't been said. Um, I really, really, really have to pee right now, um, which is pro probably a little too much more, a little too much information, guys. Um, so um, you know what? I, I'm, 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 I, I, you know what? And, I'd like to go take care of that and then say my my, my two cents if that's cool. Because um, okay. yeah, it's, right. okay. it's, okay. it's beer room time. Sure, gotcha. Right. Oh shit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. All right. uh, 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 Bash? We'll go Bash now. Uh, Bash, <laughs> go ahead. Sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, this really isn't about discrimination against individual people with religion. I have family members and friends who are religious. I don't think religion makes you a bad person um, by any means. I just think that it has really caustic effects on political discourse, which is why I believe in separation of church and state. The past, well, actually forever in America, has been an ongoing process of religious conservatives and extremists trying to undo the constitutional separation of church and state. They have tried to worm it into public life in every conceivable way. Um, people who are not religious, uh, Americans who are not religious, are accused of being traitors, of being unpatriotic, of being um, prejudiced, simply for believing that the government should not... Um, should not give uh, any particular credence to any particular religion. I think that's very, very <laughs> dangerous. These are the words of autocrats. 
And I think that the best way for us forward is to reaffirm that division, to accept the fact that, yeah, religion shouldn't have a place in statecraft. We should work forward without that. Because all the good in the world we can justify axiomatically from a secular position, but a lot of really bad arguments come out of a religious justification. Thank you. I will try to redeem it once again. Okay, yeah, I mean, I basically, I just think that um, we have not entered a uh, an era in which religion is is not a negative force within politics. And um, I, I'd say uh, people like look up something like Project Blitz. A lot of people don't know about this. It was an effort or is an, uh, an ongoing effort where um, a lot of Republican senators and Congress people are basically outsourcing bill, their bills. They're, they're getting um, religious groups to help write them. And, um, you know, and, and they, the reason why it's called Project Blitz is because they were trying to propose these bills very often, just as, as, as much as they could. Most of these were had, had a, a great deal of anti-LGBT um, aspects to them. Um, I mean, that's one thing that I can point to. I mentioned earlier that I really think that something like the National Day of Prayer should be eliminated because, well, um, if you really look into it, it's an opportunity that um, it basically, I mean, it's 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 very lit has very little to do with religion. I mean, of course, it does on the surface, but you have all of these uh, different kind of. Um, uh, sorry, I'm a little scattered here. You you have a, a lot of uh, wrap it up. Okay. You, you have a lot of outside interests coming to these things. Basically, it's it, it's just an opportunity for them to advance their political agenda. It's not about religion. So I don't know. Yeah, let's get the, those things as much out of uh, the, the main body of politics as we can and still allow it in in okay. regular discussion. Oh, okay. okay, sorry, sorry. That it wasn't as streamlined I mean, as I would have liked it to be, but there you go. No, not a problem. Thank you. Lecture fan. Well, so one thing I've noticed about on this panel and a lot of other panels is that whenever I sp start to talk and whenever I start to say something that's truthful, all the leftists freak out so bad. They all start, oh my gosh, it's like it's like when you tell the truth to a leftist, it's like showing Dracula the cross and every single one of you on this panel started to talk over me and everybody got so triggered and so bugged just because I was saying the truth and everybody started freaking out and talking. Over it happens all the time. It, it's the same thing. Uh, and I just wanted to point that out because it's so obvious. Meanwhile, nobody else gets interrupted like I do. And I get I, I can say one minute worth of speech and it freaks people out so much they can't handle it. They have to talk over me and they can't control themselves. You know what? What a lot of you guys are talking about shows a total misunderstanding of of what separation of church and state means. And, you know, if you your your guys's desire to totally eliminate any kind of religious reference from public life is actually you imposing your own religion on the rest of us. And so I'm sick of you atheists trying to shove your religion down our throat and trying to force your atheistic religion on this entire country and totally eliminate all references to religion from public life and quit trying to shove your atheist religion down our throats. I genuinely right. can't tell if it's a troll. I don't know. Okay. All right. Um, well, all right. Nothing else down his throat. Got it. Um, thank you, election fan. Uh, go ahead, Doobie. Uh, I, I, election fan, I, I just want to give you um, some things, I guess, um, for giving us like a, a good look at the irrational victim complex of the Christian trumpet fan, uh, like in action, in the wild. Uh, that, that was kind of crazy. Um, I, I don't think we actually got anywhere near um, the topic. Right, which is how do we how do we interact with these people? How do we engage with these people in a political setting? Um, I mean, like Lex Fenner said earlier, uh, that taxing religious organizations is like oppression or bigotry or some shit like that. Anti-religious freedom, I guess, freedom religious freedom means that they don't have to have to pay any tax money. That's kind of insane to me. I don't. The truth is, I don't know how to engage with people like that. Right. So <laughs> I don't. I don't think we. I'm anywhere closer to to that. Uh, unfortunately. Um, I still think Christianity, Islam, a lot of these these religions, really toxic forces in our society. And yes, I do want to wipe them out. That doesn't mean kill people. That means uh, I don't want children to be indoctrinated into these things. I think it's pretty negative. Um, so yeah, that that's about it. I'm, I'm glad to move on from this topic. Harris, I think it's just important 
to not vilify religion, but rather vilify its use for evil. Would you say that the war in the 40s was caused by the tanks? Um, religion is used as a tool, and just as any tank can be used to stop the Holocaust, it can also be used to commit atrocities. So legislating those tools is the way to go, and educating people so they can be critical of when their faith or their religion is being used as propaganda uh, for someone else's ends is also important. The core of the problem here, and what people have been talking about, is greed, bigotry, inequality. And the truth is, is that if we didn't have religion, those things would still be here and it would not solve our problem. The homie Dylan Burns. So I find it very funny that Doobie contempts religion uh, when he's actively in hell and you can see it right now. See the results of not following God's way. He's actively in hell. You can see it right now. The fiery background. <laughs> he's currently suffering. Okay. So that's the first point against you atheists. Uh, but besides that. Pretty sure that's just Phoenix, uh, Arizona. Yeah, what's the difference? Anyway, so uh, basically, I don't really talk about religion on stream that much, mostly because it, it's it's a private matter. It's not really something I like to make too much about in my public life. Uh, it's it's something that's very personal to me, and you know, I I get very heated when it's brought up uh, in that manner. So I, I basically just try to wipe it from me me talking about a public life. Basically, all 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 I say is um, don't use uh, your faith as a bludgeon against others. Use it as an inspiration to help others, and I think that's the best way to get more people to join the faith. Uh, I think that uh, our, uh, the, the Christian community in the United States uh, lost a lot of people from its movement due to its uh, rabid homophobia and a lot of, and a lot, and throughout the country. And I think it could get a lot more people into loving arms and into the good things that the church does, food banks, um, housing, uh, get connection to housing programs, uh, helping the homeless— stuff that I deeply appreciate um, if, if we were to divert from those types of tactics. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, Connor. Last word on this. All right. Prime, I'm going to go for a second. I'll try to make it fast, but you might have taken a decade off of my fucking life by making me wade through all that shit for the past 15 minutes. So I will look at the fucking prompt and I will read it to you guys again, because we ended up nowhere near the fucking prompt. Religion is often talked about separate from politics, but the two are closely tied. Zionism is root of the Torah, blah, 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 blah. So the fucking question is whether or not geopolitics is connected to fucking religion and whether or not religion is uh, connected to fucking politics. That was the whole fucking question. Had nothing to do with any specific religion. It had nothing to fucking do with we're in America, so we're going to talk about Christianity. It has nothing to do with that. Does religion drive geopolitics or politics? Does politics influence religion? And the answer is clearly yes. You guys answered yes in the fucking beginning. But then when I brought up how politics or religion might be an interactive force that go back and forth through each other throughout the entire of the fucking world, I was called reductive. I'm perfectly comfortable with talking about geopolitics. I'm comfortable about talking with about oil. I'm talk, uh, comfortable talking about war or the industrial war machine. I'm comfortable talking about fucking Americanism. I'm, talking about, I'm comfortable talking about all this shit. But religion is a component, and it's an ideological component, and on top of that, fucking words mean things. This is, a, this is a sentence that you would agree with in any other fucking context. But because we're specifically talking about religions, you go, oh, it's just a Rorschach test. It's fucking arbitrary. The fucking translations are different. Oh, uh, people just uh, see whatever the fuck they want to see out of religions. Homophobia in the Bible is just like what it's just it just came out of fucking nowhere. It's wild. You do not apply the system of logic to any fucking thing. And the whole purpose of the prompt was to blow past the fucking taboo of talking about religious doctrine and how it influences the world. We have completely failed to blow past the fucking taboo. And if anything, we've just enforced it through this fucking conversation anymore. So is fucking Harry Potter about like aerodynamics? Is Lord of the Rings about fucking microbiology? No, these are moral fucking prescriptions that tell societies how to fucking function and people believe them. I will wrap it up. People believe them and then they act out in the real world. All this fucking obfuscation and bullshit is childlike thinking that we need to move the fuck on from so we can have real conversations about religions, what they prescribe, and how they affect the world. And frankly, I'm tired of playing fucking defense every single fucking time I bring up a religious prescription that has a real world impact. You said you might have had a stroke, but I think you did. 
Oh, uh, I think I'm I think always question, having a stroke. I think the question should have been. I think the question should have should have been modified if that was indeed what you wanted to discuss. But anyway, that's all I had to say. Okay. All right. So uh, let's roll on. Um, thank you all so much for that. Um, <laughs> Uh, and the very predictable uh, freakouts that we had uh, that you've seen displayed today. Uh, okay, uh, topic two. Uh, New York Attorney General Letitia James has filed a lawsuit against NYPD over its handling of the George Floyd protests. She alleges uh, that the department has a pattern of using excessive force and has been unwilling to make unnecessary changes. Uh, the suit aims to install a federal monitor to oversee the NYPD's policing tactics at future protests. NYC uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio uh, has come out against the suit, saying a monitor would slow his administration's efforts to make systematic changes to the department. Is the suit justified? Does the NYPD use overly violent tactics against protesters? Or is this an overreach by the AG that unfairly vilifies cops on the ground in difficult circumstances? <laughs> and are federal monitor monitors even effective in the first place? Okay, okay. I would love if I, if I could open up on this, if I may. All right, you can. Okay, first of all, the line from de Blasio that investigating the police will make it harder to reform the police is, is such grade A, absolute from the line of horse shit that I can't believe he had the audacity to even say it. Now, it is undeniable that a probe, an analysis, an investigation, these eat up resources, but these are institutions worthy of being looked into. By my, I don't remember the exact number. I'm pretty sure the NYPD has an annual budget of 83 quadrillion. Um, I'm pretty sure this is an institution which is worthy of some kind of speculation, especially seeing as how they shell out literally hundreds of millions every year in settlements um, following lawsuits. Like, this this is clearly an org. There's plenty of evidence on the table, open and available, indicating that there are things worthy of criticism and investigation here. But we never even get to hear about this um, misappropriative behavior until we get results from these analyses. Bill de Blasio doesn't want this pro because he doesn't want any more embarrassment to come to a department that's technically, at least somewhat, his responsibility. I think it's disgusting, and I think that the New York City Police Department absolutely deserves that kind of investigation. Okay, all right, let's go to that team, Mama. Yeah, uh, I agree. They do uh, deserve uh, further investigation. Um, I think there's a lot of nuance to be had about how we approach um, like uh, severe reform um, of the police departments in America. Um, and uh, I think there's very good reason for that. Um, I believe I have some exact numbers on this. The NYPD in 2019 paid out 170 million in civil lawsuits. Um, and uh, even more in 2020, if I'm not uh, mistaken, um, just so that we're aware, so that we can get this into the um, like like some comparisons. It's not just a random number. The entire United States paid out approximately three hundred million in twenty nineteen, and New York City alone was over half of that. And uh, yeah, it's absurd. It's actually wild. And and the, the stats get even weirder because if you look a little deeper and you do some math based on the number of police officers. NYPD police officers approximate um, make up for about five percent of the total police officers in the United States, but they are more than half of all civil judgments and claims in the United States. <laughs> five percent is doing half of the damage. They are one of the most brutal police departments in the United States without question. Um, and this has been going on. This has been in, uh, researched to a great degree. In fact, it's gotten so bad um, that uh, I, I brought up some really interesting um, information, a, re a report that was done by Human Rights Watch about uh, a kettling incident that occurred on the 4th of June in 2020. Um, and it, you, you, it, this is one of the most galling reports I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, and and par particularly because it totally shoots the idea that there's just some bad apples in here. The chief of the NYPD was present with over 25 supervisory officers as they beat protesters who were peacefully protesting. And and by the way, even if you uh, wanted to discount the human rights issues with beating, kettling, and arresting mass amount of peaceful protesters, um, the cost of this was so ridiculous for a peaceful protest that didn't do any damage. Okay, Vadim. Um, yeah, I think uh, overall this is uh, pretty based. Like, I think it's a really good thing that they're going through with this. I hope to see more suits like this because I think it it's basically a good tool to try and uh, start 
holding police accountable, getting getting actual reform. I agree completely with Vash. It's both disgusting and very um, just, just overall disappointing de Blasio. Um, I, I believe that, he, you know, in the run up to his election, he was um, kind of um, criticizing things like stop and frisk and talking about kind of uh, just just uh, bad police practices in general of the NYPD. And, and now he's doing this really just it just sucks. I haven't been keeping um, track of the dude because I'm no longer a New Yorker. Um, I don't know what else to like. I, I'm just going to echo both what Demon Mama and Vouch said, but um, I, I, you know, I've 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 been subject to like like I've I've been at protests in New York and seen it firsthand. I've had seen seen my friend get kicked in the balls for really no reason. Um, so I don't know. I know anecdotal, so uh, grain of salt and whatnot. But yeah, they, these these uh problems go much further than just the way in which cops conduct themselves within protests, and hopefully this can start addressing both how they uh, conduct themselves within protests and beyond. Okay. Uh, we will go to uh, uh, lecture fan. Well, I'm against the AG in New York doing this. Uh, policing is a uh, policing is a local issue. It, it should be handled at the local level. This is the city police. They can handle the they can handle their city police at the city level. Um, I think the bigger issue is this is obviously part of the sort of internal war going on in the Democrat Party over defund the police and hate the police. And, you know, if you want to if you want to know why the Democrats lost all 25, every single toss up race in the House, the Democrats got wiped out in the House. Uh, if you want to know why Democrats lost governor's mansions, you want to know why Democrats lost state legislative houses in 2020. Um, yeah, Joe Biden won. But if you actually look at the election results, it was actually a wipeout for Democrats in a lot of ways. That's because of this defend the defund the police nonsense. And there's a lot of there's a big uh, group in the in the how Democrat House who is pushing back against this crazy stuff. And so I love to see it. Let's get these radical, radical left wing AGs out there attacking city police departments. I love to see it. I love to see a, a, a left winger Democrat mayor in New York City going after a left wing AG of New York. And they're all gonna, now they're going to fight each other about who hates the police more and I who can screw up the city more. And it's like the funding um, the police. I mean, New York is in so much trouble anyway because they've been ruled by – everybody's leaving New York to go to red states. I mean, if you want to see success in this country, uh, you need to go to red states like Texas and Florida and places like that. Meanwhile, California and New York are empty, emptying out. So, you know, love to see just a complete disaster in these blue states. Let's go to uh, DB. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I basically agree with Vosh, uh, Dim, Mom, and uh, Fadim. Um, I, I don't see, I, I can't imagine a scenario in which uh, oversight is a bad thing. Uh, I think if you're if you're conservative, right, you're, you're uh, a blue line type, right, and you think the police aren't as violent as people say, you should probably want this investigation anyway, just to, just so that at the other, the other end, the police are proven to be like angels or whatever the fuck, right? But my, my, my hunch is, going all the way back to like Occupy Wall Street, we, we've all seen the videos, we've all seen the reports of protesters being brutally beaten by these people. Uh, there, there's probably some some shitty some shitty shit going on, right? So I, I don't see how this is a bad thing. If, if there are policies that need to be changed, if there are people that need to be held accountable, hopefully charged. We're probably not going to see that. Uh, I, I want it to happen. So it's pretty pretty straightforward. And I, I just I just don't understand, lecture friend, how how you could possibly think this is a bad thing. Um, but I mean, I guess we'll get to that. All right, Harris. Honestly, I'm not too educated on this topic, so like, yeah, you can just pass over me for this. Sorry about uh, that. Uh, okay, Dylan Burns. Look, I, uh, I don't understand um, how anybody could look at the facts of this and really just stand back and say, like, maybe there shouldn't be any monitoring of the situation. If you look at the Attorney General's investigation, there are over 155 instances just from the protests alone, the George Floyd protests, not going all the way back to the start of the BLM movement, just George Floyd protests of excessive force, uh, use of uh, beating protesters, punching protesters, kicking, uh, uh, use of mace in an uh, in a aggressive uh, manner that did not need to be used. Not only that, but when the APM curfew was eventually instituted, people that it did not apply to, medics, observers, etc., they were getting arrested too, which, which is a violation of their rights. 
as somebody who respects the Constitution, and that that is a, I I can I'll stand by that too. I can source that if you need me to. As stands by the Constitution, the First Amendment is a hundred percent something they care about, and not giving the most powerful institution uh, in this country anything you give a gun is an extremely powerful institution if it literally has the right to kill you. Uh, and, and it's a certain situation, not monitoring that situation very closely. I don't understand how this is a like a big versus small government thing if the small government, which is still a government, is abusing its power against the people. And this isn't the only probe into this matter. There was a separate probe by the city's department investigation that found that a poorly prepared police force used overly aggressive tactics that heightened tensions around the protest. The NYPD's response has also spurred several lawsuits, including, se I think, several federal civil rights suits. I mean, this police force seems to be just... Not having a great time recently with when not to beat the protesters and when to beat the protesters. So I don't think a, a federal monitor, someone literally just saying, hey, let's let's make sure you don't beat all these protesters uh, when you don't need to beat all these protesters. It's really that out of line. Um, so I, I don't really understand uh, why there would be much uh, opposition to this. And if you think that these police are acting 100 percent appropriate and the all 155 instances were fine and all the instances of arresting them after the fact were fine, then a monitor will just prove that you're right. And you can call me like a libcuck after whatever. Absolutely. All right. Yes. Call him a libcuck. All right. Open to the panel. OK, wait, just want to yeah. say really quick, a disclaimer. Uh, so just to make sure I looked up, made sure that as I expected, everything lecture fan said was incorrect. People are not fleeing um, blue states. Red states are not seeing a giant population boost. The only two states that are seeing a precipitous decline are New York and California. The most likely explanation for this being that they are coastal cities with cities that have a very high, um, uh, very high um, cost of living. But uh, Heartland red states are not increasing at any particularly impressive rate. And blue states on the coast, like, say, for example, Washington, are still increasing very, very quickly, in spite of the fact that Seattle's a pretty expensive place to live. In other words, this is just another attempt at a snowflake trying to cram a narrative into a set of data he doesn't understand. Additionally, okay. I, I, I don't do... think the counterpoints got... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Vosh. I'm Thank sorry. You. I, I don't think counterpoints got an opener, so oh, I, the counterpoints. I, I feel oh, like... The, the, please, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I feel... Know. Yeah, can can I please? Because I'm gonna outflank all of you centrist cucks. You guys are all not asking for enough. You want the federal you want the federal government to do a one time investigation into the New York Police Department? Fuck that shit. How about you have an independent investigative arm stuck in the state police who has the like basically works with the attorney general specifically off of one of Vosh's ideas, which I'm gonna keep repeating until the day that I fucking die, enforcing a series of laws that uniquely apply to law enforcement. So for instance, as an example, if you lie on a police report in order to get a conviction, you spend 10 years behind fucking jail. If you plant fucking evidence in order to secure conviction, you spend 30 years behind fucking prison. If you fucking conduct, uh, you know, basically excessive force, then obviously the situation is going to dictate what you do. But at the same time, you could be brought up on battery charges if it was unwarranted. There, there's a whole se and there's a whole series of very interesting and effective things that you could do. And as a matter of fact, uh, there, there's a beautiful movie featuring uh, a beautiful man, Denzel Washington, uh, about the corruption in the New York Police Department during the 19 uh, during the 1970s and what it took in order to root out the corruption of the narcot narcotics units inside the New York Police Department was third party accountability. No conservative, no libertarian, no person who gives a fuck about balance of power should negatively not like third party accountability to rules that we can agree upon. And with that, I will cede the floor. OK, I had no idea why we had to hear about uh, I'm a police officer about police, but go ahead. Uh, well, do we and yeah, I just want to ask a, a quick question. Um, I just want to know if that, uh, you know, penalties, you know, for, for lying on police reports, uh, you know, 10 years, um, do, would that extend to other police officers who are aware of, of uh, their, you know, fellow, fellow police officers lying on police reports? Would they also be subject to some kind of penalty or prison time? Yes. If they don't, if um, they don't come so, forward. Yeah. Yep. So, so Laquan, okay, so this is the perfect example. I believe it's Laquan McDonald in the city of Chicago. Um, he was killed in a law enforcement shooting. I yeah. think he was high on PCP at the time. He was carrying a knife. Four officers lied in order to co corroborate the shooter's narrative. If 
they had basically a third party investigative arm that they knew could review the uh, the body cam footage and that they knew could review the dash cam footage. And they knew that if they lied on the report, then they would basically they would lose their career, lose their jobs, lose their income and potentially spend years behind bars. They would not have lied on their reports. Law enforcement officers should be held to a higher standard, not a lower standard of behavior. And most good cops are not going to object to laws that ask them to be good and enforce them to be good. The only people who are going to bitch about this are people who want corruption. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that was surprising coming from you, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm well, 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 dude, I'll explain it real quick. Uh, you sure. should watch, you should watch my video specifically addressing. Okay. All right. Yeah, I did. All right. We can talk about speaking, it. Counterpoints okay. Is pretty so, okay. Good so wait, 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 I thought I, I was next. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, Dylan. Um, so yeah, I want to just, I, I'm eagerly awaiting lecture fan to, uh, somehow construe this as me being triggered. Um, I, I feel like we should address lecture fan here because he seems to be the, you know, the one who has the, um, the minority opinion here. And um, I just, I, I guess I, I just want to ask you a question. I see a don't tread on me uh, flag behind you. And I'm guessing that, you know, that you are pro Second Amendment. And one of the reasons why you are is because of the fact that, you know, um, it, people need to be armed in case the government itself becomes tyrannical. So um, I just I feel like there's some sort of disconnect between uh, and you can f let me know if I'm wrong in my assumption that you believe that it seems like there's some sort of disconnect here between holding that view and not wanting to hold cops accountable for actual. Um, sure, let know, me, uh, OK, go let for me. it. Go for it. I'll You're completely wrong shit. that I don't believe in holding cops accountable. And in fact, and in fact, this is one of those sort of areas where you actually could have some unity in America and you could have some agreement um, because people on the right, libertarians, civil libertarians, conservatives, we 100 percent believe in constitutional use of police power. We believe that police officers should be held accountable. And in fact, it's wonderful in the United States of America. We are one of the few countries where we actually hold our police officers accountable for when they they do improper things. We're one of the few countries where you can uh, file lawsuits against uh, the state or the city uh, or the federal government um, for violating your constitutional rights by a police officer. They're called Section 1983 lawsuits. Um, and so this is one of those areas where we could actually have an agreement and a lot of people believe that if there is excessive use of force, the cops are sh uh, should be taken care of. The problem is, is that you left this, have this hatred for cops that bleeds there through there and you take go. this extreme extreme view that then it's like okay if you guys are going to take that view and you're going to want like people monitoring cops and you have this degrading view of cops and it's like we already have a hard enough time recruiting people to want to be cops they have a very difficult job they're out there trying to protect us and you guys are like spitting on them and and it's like <laughs> what this is horrible for them right, right, right. Hold hold on on should be honoring, we should be honoring Wait. We should be honoring our cops. We should be Wait. we should be thanking I'd, our police officers instead of this degrading, disrespectful nonsense. I'd like to put forward a proposal. Wait, hold on. I'd like to put forward a proposal. We can all just ignore lecture fan because he nothing he says ever has anything to do with what's going on. We talk about, hey, True. is it okay to engage in this monitoring of police? And he says no. And then he's called and he's like, well, I'm not against monitoring police, but somewhere elsewhere, leftists hate cops. Like, there's no relationship between what he's saying and the actual discussion topic, so we can just keep him like a mascot or a pet. And the rest of us can talk. Is that what? Well, He's like on, a black I, hole of conversation. No, Info Wait, just I'm, I'm, goes I'm still... in. Nothing comes out. Well, I, well, well, well I do want to introduce well, something can to I, this can conversation. I, can I just, can I, can I just ask him a, a question really quickly? Weak, Vouch. Um, weak. Because he, he just said there, Alexia, you just said that you're not opposed to police oversight. Right. So if that's the case. We right, have, we I, have the responsibility. We have Our police officers are held responsible. Sure. You don't so need monitors. Not They're called the police. Please, the police being held accountable. Why are you opposed to the, to this lawsuit by the Attorney General of New York? Um, and, and secondly, why are you opposed? Uh, it's uh, you know by extension opposed to there being monitors uh, at protests in the future to to, over, to oversee their, their, uh, their tactics. There's lots of there's lots of monitors at protests already. They're, he can't they're hear called you. protesters. No, no, I just, okay, oh, wait, wait, I have, reason, I have something really important. Uh, policing uh, is a local issue. And then number three, the intentions behind it and the purpose behind it and the larger movement that's going on. That's why. Those are the three wait, reasons. Wait, what? 
you're going to give me an aneurysm. Okay, so okay. Okay. So, you, so you're not actually opposed to, the, to monitors being there. You just think there are already monitors there, is what, is what you're saying. Yes. I'm all in favor of people watching police officers do their job, and if they do something no, wrong, a court, you can report a court them or, report on or a video. federal monitor, like like counterparts. Suggesting. No, we absolutely do not. We, no, should, we should be giving the police officers benefit so of the doubt, thanking them and, ah, and honoring them for what they do. All right, let me let me introduce some stuff here. I want to read. Um, I have some some cold hard facts to bring into this situation. So um, there was a number of protests, as we know, uh, specifically in June in New York, uh, in New York City. And I want to read just a real, real quick. I just want to read a couple of little, um, uh, uh, a little bit of segments from the report that was done. Some um, testimony to the victims of police brutality. Let me just let me just give this to you. Here we go. Uh, this is from Charlie Malouy Anderley. Um, from the June 3rd uh, George Floyd protest in New York. My arm was broken by the police. They were kicking my bike and I tried to pull it free of their kicks. I fell as they tackled me, battering me with their batons. As they pinned my arms, legs, and head to the ground, my whole body went limp and my bladder released. I felt grateful that my backpack held my bike helmet and shielded my spine from their blows. They pulled my arms back, zip-tied my wrist, and, and tightly bound the straps of my backpack so it swung upside down behind me as they lifted me from the ground. I yelled, feeling a sharp pain in my right arm and I had the acute sensation my right arm was detached from my body. Let me read you another one from Chantel Johnson. I will never forget the officer who took his baton and busted me in my face. I had a split lip. I will never forget his face. I had to hold on to another black uh, to, uh, to a black man as he took his beatings. Every time he got hit, I felt the hit through his body. Uh, every single hit I felt, I heard bones crack. I saw people getting their heads bashed in. We had nowhere to go. We were trapped. I was actually in the process of becoming N NYPD. And after that experience, I never would. And then after these things occurred, uh, you claim that there already are observers at this. And you're right. There are. The New York, uh, like I said at the very beginning, the chief of the police department, Terrence Monahan, was present with over 25 supervisory officers of various ranks the next day after those two testimonies took place, at which point the police illegally kettled an entire group of peaceful protesters. They were attempting to leave the location after being after the area being declared a curfew. And they were not allowed to leave by the police. So they were held there illegally after the curfew. They could not leave. They were then kettled and all of them were arrested. Multiple of them were beaten. Um, there were people slammed to the ground, tackled, dragged, 14 incidents of, p of police firing pepper, pepper spray directly into the, the participants' faces, four incidents of the police throwing bikes at protesters and two incidents where police restrained participants with a knee to the face or to the upper neck. This was after the already uh, the already um, brutal examples I gave to you there. And this is all from New York City reports and nothing is done about it. And nothing is done because of people like Lecture Fan who want you to bend over and lick the boot while they literally crush your teeth in with a stick because they can. Wait, really quick, Demon Mama, do you have any examples of uh, white people suffering police brutality? I think it might be more effective here. Oh that. yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't look into the race of all these individuals before I brought it up. Uh, okay. uh, but yeah, just yeah. just a tip from one content creator to another. Okay, this is you're the type. probably right. Yeah, you gotta yeah. get the a little yeah. more careful. Go ahead, Dylan. Okay, so actually, I wanna I wanna back up here and actually talk about uh, police brutality and the lack of investigation in Hong Kong. Okay, for a second here, as for for an example, because we you know we wanna talk about the example of not having investigative power in other countries in the world. Okay, so the Hong Kong police force. Uh, is of course was established by the British uh, Hong Kong government in 1844 and is under the service of the Security Bureau of Hong Kong. And here's some stories I wanted to bring up from here, right? Here's some stories from when the main Hong Kong protests were going on. He attacked me while my hands were high up in the air. I was no threat. I was not being aggressive or hostile, but still I got assaulted police. This talks about a, a protester having their mask yanked off and pepper spray applied to them. While they had the mask, they tear it off and apply it to them. Here's another instance. Another person said he was walking to the subway after uh, leaving the hospital when a police was beating someone on the ground. He began to record them with his phone. An officer then charged them, pushed him to the ground where several officers beat him, causing a bloody head wound that required seven staples to close. When he said he was just trying to get home, he then said, you picked a wrong time to do that. The person, of course, said he was terrified. One last one. Uh, there was an instance where basically... Um, there was the use of kettling in Hong Kong uh, around, I think it was November, 
where there was a, uh, it was about the election and re-election of, of Carrie Lam to the executive uh, office. And what happened was that they were, the protesters were, were kettled and then they were beaten hit and people's teeth were knocked out it was so brutal um sorry i mispronounced that wrong that was actually the new york city police department and these are many of the different 155 instances that were being investigated into um you can of course replace carrie lamb with mayor bill de blasio now what i'm trying to get out here is police brutality is not a solely uh, of course it's not a solely american problem it's all around the country but many of the instances we have extreme views with with an angry face over the world right we'll look over at hong kong and we'll say that's horrible what's happening to the hong kong protesters we'll look over to russia that's horrible what's happening to the navalny protesters but then we look at our own country and all all of a sudden we find ways to justify it we find ways to say well no this is it, it, we, we need to look at the specific oh those 155 cases i'm sure there's no need for a monitor and of course if there was any other like example of this if we were in hong kong right now and we're having this conversation and the idea of we found 155 instances of the hong kong police department beating protesters or, or being abusive to them we have instances of of people who their rights to monitor or 100 percent protected after curfew and they're being arrested people's teeth being knocked out and we having all these civil lawsuits and, and multiple monitors being proposed and rejected by Carrie Lam, it would be nothing but immediate outrage by the wide swath of American society, which it should be, and we should be outraged at peace brutality around the world. But when we don't show that same amount or even more outrage domestically when it happens here, it undermines their credibility as Americans to speak about police brutality in Hong Kong, in Russia, in Bolivia, and anywhere across the world. So I'm going to get Connor a chance, and then I want to go back to Lecture Fan, because last has been said uh, to Lecture Fan, about Lecture Fan. I want to make sure he can uh, uh, speak his uh, mind. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, so, so basically, like, th this, is my, this is my problem, because I'm literally trapped um, in my own very unique experiential and philosophical and legal bubble. Um, you know, there's, there is no correct way that a citizen is going to agree to getting their, their, you know, their ass kicked. Like, there, there's just no good way to beat someone's ass, okay? Pe people don't enjoy getting the shit kicked out of them. They don't enjoy being thrown in handcuffs. They don't enjoy being pepper sprayed. But at the same time, there are some legal situations in which cops do have a, uh, uh, the need to intervene. Now, I'm not saying that any of these things are justified, unjustified. I don't fucking know. I wasn't there. Um, but at the same time, what we do need, the reason why you need third party accountability is because you can suss this out. If people are wearing body cameras, the cop is saying, hey, this is an unlawful assembly. You need to leave at this point. And the guy says, fuck you. I'm going to kill you and your entire family. And it's like, hey, I told you, if you don't fucking leave, I'm going to arrest you. This is why body cameras are good. This is why third party accountability is good. This is why having an independent judiciary or an independent AG is good because they can look at the laws as written and the use of formants agreements as written and translate whether or not things are fucking reasonable and they don't have the perverse incentive or uh, what do you call it, conflict of interest of supervising their own people because basically they're they're going to they're going to clean up their own fucking messes and they're going to fucking they're going to cover up their own shit. So that being said, fucking like basically what we need here, because we're, we're never going to agree on a lot of shit, is we have an opportunity, especially with all the people who are watching right now. We have an opportunity to educate the public on what use of force is, on what the laws are, on how you interact with police, on how you conduct yourself in a fucking traffic stop. I'm going to do those things on my channel, and I would like it if everybody here, including the crazy far leftists, I would like it if they took an opportunity not just to gin up uh, social justice activist sentiment, but also taught their people where the legal lines and, and social lines were, and also taught people how to be safe. And I, I, I wish that I could agree with you on that last part. It's just the problem to, is- Got to go to lecture fan. Got to go to lecture fan. Um, so wait a bit patiently. We'll go back to all of you. Okay, I just want to say, I don't know what your problem is with me, Vouch, but the personal attacks and then that last comment you just made a second ago was very inappropriate and rude wait, and uncalled for. And you you don't know me. And I, I'm really sorry that you you felt that you had to go there and go that low. And, you know, wait, I, what I, I, wait, hope that you re, I hope that you reconsider how you treat people. And same to you, Demon Mama. You guys have been very, very rude and disrespectful to me. Cry and harder, I don't think it's very please. nice. And I hope that you guys reconsider how you, you treat you're people. You're asking us to accept like police crashing people's teeth in and then you're gonna cry here because people got a little spicy on a panel Wait, just I just wanna know what, been whining this whole time i legitimately have a really bad memory i don't actually know what i did or said 
I was gonna keep oh, being mean. Oh, you implied that he would have cared more if it was a white person. Oh sure. Uh, okay. Wait, yeah. lecture. Wait, lecture. I think that's fan. probably true. Though, What's yeah. your opinion I... on uh, BLM? Dude, I'm, I, I, all I wanted to say to you, Vash, is that that was very I stand inappropriate the way that you the way that you went went about that, and I, I really truly hope that you reconsider how you treat. Damn. People. Do you have any Suck. other uh, points, uh, like in terms of everything else, or, um, lecture fan? If not, that's okay. All right. Um, go I wanna, can I take my final statement? I, 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 cause I can, yeah, cause I can. Go for it. it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay. All I want to say is I th honestly, I don't know why anyone would be against transparency. Transparency is just super good. Um, like I'll, I'll give you an example. Lecture fan also believes in excessive transparency because I guarantee you that he was 100% behind everything being done with the emails in Benghazi with Hillary Clinton, even though that nothing actually turned up, but I actually was in favor of those investigations initially the first round of them. Um, uh, because I do care a lot about transparency, even if the people who are being investigated are my political allies, even if it sometimes slows down departments that I'm in favor of. I like transparency because at the end of the day, we live in a democracy and we live in a country where constitutionally we assign a certain value to the um, decentralization of power, and checks and balances. And the fact of the matter is we can't do those things unless um, we know what's going on. And uh, frankly, I don't think that an investigation really interferes with the functionality of a uh, of, of the police department's job. Like, it, or if it does, to an incredibly minimal extent. I mean, we're not talking about shutting down the department. We're just talking, I imagine, about an independent investigatory body. And you ask a few questions, you know, stock them out in a couple of patrols. It just seems like a win-win. An opposition to an idea like this is just, it's it's... Incomprehensible. Well, but it interrupts it interrupts so, that that thin blue line narrative. It interrupts that ideology that says you have right, to worship the, goal, the cops. Right. The goal is yeah. reverence to the state, of course, which means exactly. when you investigate them, you find wrongdoing, and that makes it difficult to promote unadulated bootlicking. Um, right. And that, of course, that's really the reason why. But so if we we'll want go, to function in government, we need to be able to investigate when these things happen. We'll go to, we'll go to Vadim. Um, and uh, it seems like we have like a lot of agreement on this topic. Uh, so we'll yeah. probably just go to the next one afterwards. Sure. Um, don't have to beat up on Lecture Fan anymore. <laughs> I, I, I have a question for Lecture Fan, but first I just want to say something very quickly. Um, you, you, you know, you made a lot of comments earlier that I don't think were really rooted in the conversation that was actually occurring, saying things to the effect of that we, um, or, well, a good deal of us just um, more or less hate religious people and are uh, oppressing them and um, hate cops. I mean, I don't think any of that language was actually used. So I don't think any of that, I think that the bad faith with which you were operating there is at best, no worse than anything Vosh said to you. But the next thing that uh, I wanted to say or ask you is just, do you straight up just do not believe that um, police were um, doing anything? Like, do, do, you, do you not believe the accounts that we have of so many people reporting in uh, just, just horrible practices from the police during the George Floyd protests? Do you, do, do you, I mean, do you honestly think that the attorney general is kind of, I don't know, fabricating these things? Like what, what because, because if you think that they're genuine, then why would you oppose this? So I, you I know. make I make I make my determinations based on the evidence, and I think that they ought to follow the proper process for when there's allegations of police mis misconduct. We have a process that can be followed, and lawsuits can be filed. Police officers are filed fired regularly for these types of things, and and we have a great system set up to handle these types of things. Iris. Oh, okay. I finally have an opinion. Um, isn't <laughs> isn't transparency? The thing that's going to save the police, though, from my understanding, a lot of there's a lot of talk about defunding the police and everything. So the outcome of this investigation could lead to the information that's needed to save police forces, um, to change police forces and update them to, you know, this 21st century, which obviously they haven't been. So I don't I don't really see like why anyone would have an issue with. Um, with that, I'm seeing in Canada, there's a lot of moves towards transparency with our police departments. So I just don't understand the, the issue. Like, especially if you believe in law and order and you don't believe in defunding the police, and this is a viable answer. Okay, okay I'll get I, Connor. Oh, I, I, can, I can do it as a part of a closing statement if you want. Yeah, sure. 
um, and then we'll just move on. Sounds good. Oh, you want me to start? Shit. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, okay. So here, here's the reason why, um, very specifically, like I think that the current system that we have is bad. So what will happen is a uh, police complaint will come in, and if it's of a minor nature, hey, your cop was speeding, he pulled out in front of me, he told me to fuck off during a heated situation, all that kind of shit, it will actually typically go to like a shift sergeant who will decide arbitrarily whether or not that dessert, that complaint goes up to the next person in the chain of command. So if it's not that serious, they can talk the person down, the person doesn't write a formal complaint, or if they just say, ah, you know what, I, I, I said my piece, I'm not interested in pursuing the matter further, then the complaint dies at the sergeant level if there's a serious complaint like hey somebody beat the fuck out of me or raped me or some shit like that that's going to get reported up to like the lieutenants and captains and then there's going to be an investigation but at the same time what that investigative arm is going to be is going to be the ia so basically what's going to happen is going to be a uh, cop who's a member of that police department who's investigating the police officer who's deciding whether or not to file charges with the state attorney guess what this becomes highly politicized and highly nepotistic where basically what will happen is if the police department doesn't fucking like you, they will torture ass. And if they do fucking like you, they'll cover up your bullshit. Now, of course, there's limits for everybody. I'm not saying that like they're going to cover up planting drugs or fucking rapes or some shit like that. But at the same time, there's still plenty of shady shit that does happen that does get fucking covered up. And on top of that, Doobie was asking earlier if I supported, um, you know, basically like there being punishments for cops uh, covering up for other cops. The reason why I said yes is because if we had an independent mechanism, if we had a uh, independent investigative arm, if we had a, um, you know, basically somebody that I, as a cop who was uncomfortable with the conduct of another cop, was able to report to without uh, inflicting a whole bunch of personal career damage on myself. I'm not saying that I would have used it in the specific instance that Doobie is alluding to, but cops would be infinitely more likely to do that. It's just a, it, and I'll wrap this up. But it's just a question of how you structure power. Power checks power. You do not leave power unchecked, especially in a republic, especially in a republican democracy. And if you're a libertarian at all, you should like that. Okay. All right. So uh, let's uh, move on. Um, so okay. Oh, I'll give you all. Uh, um, I'll give you all the uh, choice between uh, what we'll do. Right. Um, so uh, we'll have we have two topics left, and I want to know which one of them you like the, uh, the most. Right. Uh, so uh, we have uh, topic three, uh, which is on uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene um, and uh, possibly violating her free uh, speech. Um, and then, uh, uh, or we have the, our bonus topic, which is uh, talking about bodily autonomy and um, uh, drugs and sports. Okay. So uh, we'll let you vote on them. I'm going to go down the line. Tell me topic three, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Or a bonus topic, uh, drugs and sports. Okay, uh, um, uh, we'll go to Demon Mama. Topic three or a bonus topic? Let's do topic three. Um, also, I don't feel like I got to do a closing statement. Did I? Get no, I, I just said we were going to move on. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah um, Marjorie Taylor Green for sure. Marjorie Taylor Green. Uh, Vadim. Marjorie Taylor Green. Okay. Uh, Connor. Bonus. Bonus. Okay. Uh, Vadim. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Bosch. <laughs> Sorry, you caught me mid-bite there. Um, I got Sorry. to get a protein bar. Why are we saying Marjorie Taylor Greene? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a chant we say uh, to lift our spirits. Oh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, yeah. <laughs> uh, ble yeah, blessed be her name. Many be the Jewish space lasers, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, what we're doing is we're voting uh, between which of the next two topics to go to, uh, since we probably only have time for one. Um, so uh, the topic three is the Marjorie Taylor Greene one. Um, and then bonus topic is the uh, uh, drugs and sports uh, topic. So uh, which one would you uh, prefer? I feel like everybody but lecture fan is going to be on the same side with the Marjorie Taylor Greene thing. Um, True. That's how every topic's been. Yeah, it's rough out there being a dumb fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my God. I leave it up to, I I leave it up to you guys. <laughs> All right, well. That's a vote uh, lecture fan. I'm a, I'm a lecture fan. Woo! Like anything? Which one? Uh, MTG. Uh, oh, MTG. Really? Okay. All right. Um, let's go. Uh, Doobie. Uh, topic three. I think sports is boring. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Eris. Um, the sports one. Oh, sports. Okay. All right. Um, and Doobie. 
I'm oh, sorry, not uh, Dylan. <laughs> um, uh, first, I want to condemn Vosh for being a bully, uh, a, a a meanie, uh, and very, very mean, very disrespectful, hateful left. Hateful left. Hateful He's so left. triggered. He has, he has the same amount of hate for police that he hates has for lecture fan. An, another proud God fearing American. I just wanted to throw that out before anything else. And uh, I, I want to talk about the Patriot, uh, uh, Major uh, Taylor Green. Okay. All right. Uh, that's 1984. The, the Patriot. Is that that what your mind goes to when you think of uh, MTG? Uh, I mean, it takes a lot of bravery to call out the Jewish space lasers, you know? <laughs> I True. mean, you would know about. I'm mean, not. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know nothing about nothing. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, all right, all friends here. Um, all right. Topic three. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, a congresswoman from Georgia, had her committee assignments shipped by the Democratic House of Representatives. This was due to statements uh, she made previously that threatened Speaker Nancy Pelosi, among others. Uh, should these past comments be held against her? Are the actions against her a violation of her free right to free speech? Uh, should apologizing and disavowing uh, her statements uh, be enough to move past this? If we acknowledge that individuals can change their minds, when I give Congressman Green the benefit of the doubt, and I want to thank uh, both uh, Connor and Vadim because you both uh, uh, suggested this uh, topic. Thank you both uh, for submitting it. Uh, all right, uh, we will go to Demon Mama. Yeah, uh, no, I don't believe that Marjorie Taylor Greene's uh, First Amendment rights are um, being damaged by her being stripped of uh, her committee assignments. That's a ridiculous stretch. Um, there are consequences for the things that you say. And as it turns out, Marjorie Taylor Greene has said a lot of very horrible, very dangerous, very false things. Everything from the oft uh, oft referenced Jewish space lasers, which is one of the funnier ones, um, to the more sickening and disturbing um, sign offs on things like killing other politicians, um, on things like um, wholeheartedly and full throatedly supporting um, QAnon and all of the QAnon uh, follow ups uh, to supporting the actions of uh, the, in the insurrectionists on the 6th. It really just it goes be above and beyond. Honestly, I believe that it would be a much more just uh, nation if such a person was not allowed to hold position uh, in in the uh, House of Representatives, or at the very least, was not considered acceptable to be a representative. Um, but as that's not the case, I think it's perfectly fine for her peers, who she has threatened, who she has supported, people who have threatened their lives, don't feel comfortable trying to collaborate with her on committee uh, uh, appointments. Yeah, no, this is just mostly, again, it's just a bunch of whining from right-wingers who need to feel like they're persecuted uh, for everything, even when there's like basic basic responsibilities that are given to them about their position in public office. Okay, Connor. Yeah, I, I don't have too much to say. I, I think the precedent set by defending MJT is a bad precedent to set. There's plenty of things that I would find deeply uncomfortable if a left-wing politician was advocating for. If, uh, you know, AOC was saying, hey, all conservatives need to be, you know, gunned down in the street. And, you know, basically like uh, any conservative who's, you know, basically a piece of shit, you should go ahead and try to take them out. There, there's a whole bunch of hyper-conservative Christian nationalist Nazis who are going to take over this country unless you act. Right now, um, I would be deeply uncomfortable with the uh, the organs of government not taking action against that person. Um, I am a Republican in the fact that I believe in a republic. I think a republic has to have rules and norms that support itself in order to sustain itself into the future. Okay, uh, let's go to uh, Vadim. This hits a little close to home because I was once in a debate with a 9-11 truther who believed that Jewish space lasers were responsible for taking down the World Trade Center. I was wearing this shirt and I was dubbed Run the Jews by his audience. But um, anyhow, um, yeah, I think this is perhaps the most laughable incident of um, 
uh, people mixing up cancel culture, which is a, a term that I'm not crazy about, but I, I, I don't know whether that the, it's not the conversation with the uh, consequences, uh, with, with just the natural consequences of s- just saying out there bat shit. And I think that, um, you know, her views do not conform. R- really, this is the main problem. Her views, the things that she has said, uh, just ma- they massively do not conform to reality. And they do beg the qu- maybe beg the question isn't right, but they, they it demands the question like is this person mentally sound to uh to to be in office and the last thing that i'm going to say is this which is that uh, one interesting thing that i hope that we can touch on because i really don't know where the line is um you know like 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 where do we draw these lines like for instance general flynn who is working under trump was um tweeting out pizzagate shit and i think that that's pretty pretty crazy so i'm not saying that necessarily he should have had the same treatment but where where where's the cutoff i'm 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 kind of interested in kind of uh, maybe discussing some of that if people are up for that all right let's go to the team sorry oh, fuck. Oh, okay i can go again oh, no no <laughs> Vadim, don't let me other, steal your glory <laughs> i take the hard line on this um while presently there isn't really a system for doing so marjorie taylor green should not be allowed to hold office for a number of reasons I mean, we can dance around it all we want, but Marjorie Taylor Greene is the future of the Republican Party. Um, We will not see a return to (laughs) neoconservatism, at least not for the majority of the the body politic of the GOP. It's going to be extremely far. It's essentially going to be Nazism. I think that the the Republican Party is hurtling towards that, and I don't think anything's going to stop it. I don't think there's anything that a Republican legislator could say or do that wouldn't get at least 50% of the people in um, in Congress, the Republican half of Congress, to just openly agree with it. Um, uh, unless, like, they're, like, I don't know, like some open crime or something like that. Um, this is often called the tolerance paradox. Does a tolerant society have a moral obligation to tolerate intolerance? And I think it doesn't. In order for a democratic uh, society to survive, it needs to excise legitimate threats to democracy as an institution. Um, that that's that's just that's part of the game. I don't think you can be pro democracy and then you can just open the door to anti democrats walking in and destroying the entire thing. And MTG is, I think, one of the most open and blatant anti democratic, anti freedom, uh, anti sanity candidates we've seen uh gain public prominence for some time but this isn't the only time i think it was louisiana where the front runner for governor was uh, the republican front runner i should say was uh david duke um i think back in 1990 uh the shift on the part of the republican party towards radical uh uh um the white separatism white nationalism neo-nazism has been broiling up for a long, long time. Um, Yeah, and David Duke near won that gubernatorial seat, too, former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. This isn't anything new, but we need to find a way to deal with it, because America really cannot survive continued Republican rule. Okay, Uh, next we'll go to election for them. Well... To talk about this issue, you really have to separate out whether or not you agree with what MTG said and did versus whether you think she should be stripped of her committees by Congress. And so with that in mind, I'm not I don't support those things that she said or did. However, I think it's preposterous that they would strip her of her committees. This is uh, the elected representative of the people. This is another example of Democrats truly not believing in free speech whatsoever. I mean, the Senate is now going to go forward with a trial against the president for doing something that was squarely protected within his first amendment free speech rights i wish the democrats and the leftists would just come out and say no we don't we don't support free speech um and th- this is just an and more moreover it's like you guys have a new congress a new presidency and this is what the democrats are spending their time on the democrats could be doing a bunch of different things right now to try to help the country instead they're going after a random congress person to try to strip her of a committee and then they're trying to sense or they're trying to impeach a president who's already left office this is outrageous stuff um, and by the way, uh, people only do personal attacks when they've lost the argument on the merits. And I could also engage in personal attacks, but I'm not like that. So even people who are rude and disrespectful to me, I am so kind to them. 
Dylan Burns. So I I would uh, I'm I'm gonna do this uh, in the nicest way possible. It, it's hard, but um uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that I I understand uh where where lecture is coming from here, but I think it's weird to classify a congressperson as kind of like random when they're a congressperson in the most powerful country in the world and who has they purposefully have used their their new seat and to come about and bang their chest and be a loud voice. Uh, they have done that through their the type of mask they wear. It's getting attention, like stop the fraud, through the way they speak about how the election was fraudulent and da-da-da. And they have gone on about that conspiracy theory on top of all the other conspiracy theories. And that's a conspiracy theory they have used their seat of power to promote. But let's go like through some of these, because nobody actually went through the conspiracy theories point by point. Uh, the first major one I'm going to talk about is the fact that they thought the Las Vegas shooting was staged. Here's the direct quote. How do you get avid gun owners and people that support the Second Amendment to give up their guns and go along with anti-gun legislation? You make them scared, you make them victims, and you change their mindset. And then you can possibly pass anti-gun legislation. I don't believe Paddock pulled this off by himself, and I know most of you don't either. Of course, this one's a little complicated, but basically she thinks the Rothschilds, while working with someone else, uh, developed space laser, laser programs that started the California wildfires so they could put trains throughout the California uh, countryside. So basically, Jewish-backed space lasers caused the wildfires in Cal California. She also went on a rant about how Muslims should not be able to hold office in the United States of America and specifically also said, I really want to go talk to these ladies and ask them what they're thinking about why they're serving our American government. This is a reference to Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. They really should go back to the Middle East. I also want to bring up the fact that uh, Rashida Tlaib was born in Detroit. Uh, so that doesn't even make sense from a racist standpoint. She believes that Hillary Clinton, she liked posts saying that Hillary Clinton was sacrificing children by filleting their skin alive and True. killing them. Um, she has yet to produce evidence of this, of course. I'd love to see it, though. She, of course, uh, uh, hinted at the idea that Nancy Pelosi should be killed. And I don't mean, like, vaguely. Let me read the direct quote. She's a traitor to our country. She's guilty of treason. And it's, uh, it's a crime punishable by death is what treason is. Nancy Pelosi is guilty of treason. When I was in the Capitol during the January 6th protest, that's, that was kind of suggested at me a lot. Like, did you vote for Joe Biden? Yes, I think that's treason. And... You know what the punishment for treason is, and they don't say it because then you cross the line. It's kind of like in Minecraft a little bit, except even more blatant. Uh, she also liked a 2016 po 2019 post calling for a bullet in the head of Pelosi. She believes that the 19 the 9/11 attacks were were basically a government plot, and that the plane that hit the Pentagon was uh, faked. There's a million other things I could get into, and of course, her most prominent one that she's been doing while in office is the idea that the, 26, the 2020 election was stolen in some manner, and there was so widespread fraud that it was stolen, and that Donald Trump lost because of uh, Dominion voting machines, et cetera, et cetera. She has used her position, and this isn't things from like 20, 2005. This is stuff from 2019. This is stuff that she was liking and posting while making the plans to run and running for office. In her speech, her 10-minute spiel, which I watched before I came on here, she never apologized. She never said, I'm sorry. She basically said, well, everybody sins. Everybody makes oopsie doopsies. And anyway, what about the Democrats? That was her speech. She didn't even show a basic amount of regret. Uh, I think that this is somebody who should not be getting any committee seats on, let's say, education. And most certainly... In my opinion, not be getting any committee seats of, of real influence when these are the type of nonsense that they peddle on a day to day basis. I believe not in the suspension of speech, but I believe in the consequences for people's words that they speak, consequences for their actions. Anyway, yeah, she is off the wall, bonkers, cuckoo, crazy for Cocoa Puffs. Okay, uh, let's go to Eris. I got your attention, Prime. Um, so. Basically, I think people are kind of missing the point here. I understand why everyone's villainizing her. Um, she's obviously said some atrocious things, but if you really want to resolve this issue, um, you need to get to the root of it, which is like, these people are not inherently evil. I'm sure some of them are, but most of them aren't who believe the, all these conspiracy theories that, uh, um, that Dylan was bringing up. But 
they genuinely believe this stuff. So just imagine if like, if you put yourself in their shoes and you genuinely believe in all of these conspiracy the theories, how terrifying that is, especially if you value your country, you value like where things are going. And like the real reason is it's the real villain isn't really them. Right. It's the information that's being spread to them. The fact that there's no recourse for this information, like all this fake news online. And I just think that there needs to be some kind of control over speech. And Americans need Americans basically are going through what a lot of nations go through, where you where because America's quite young for a nation um, in the grand scheme of things, which people don't realize. And if they really looked at themselves and thought, there are some things that we were founded on that are just not useful for the present day. And one of those things could be free speech because in an, in an era of the internet where everyone could just publish things with like no recourse and spread all these lies, this is the consequence. You end up with good people who have these really, really bad takes and can potentially actually damage people's lives because of that. DB, finish out the opening statements. Uh, yeah, I, I just got to say, um, lecture fan, it's, it's really interesting that you'd be so like opposed to, to, you know, us shoving our atheist beliefs in your throat when you've been gagging so hard in the boot of these fucking crazy people for the last couple hours. Right. I, 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 I don't agree with Fosh. Right? I don't think this is a feature of the Republican party. Um, I think it can be if people like you don't stop running defense for these fucking nutbags, right? You, you need to stop. Right. This this woman was on an education committee and in 2019 she filmed herself harassing one of the survivors of the Parkland school shooting. This person should not be on any education committees. If you to come on here and, and to bitch about her be ta being taken off these committees when she clearly should be taken off these committees is insane to me. Right. I can understand being afraid of the, the evil Democrats taking away your free speech and all this kind of shit. But I, I got I got to say defending these people is not the way you win. Right, you, you're you're fucking humiliating yourself, humiliating everything the Republican Dude, Party. Did you not hear what I said? For. I'm not. It, oh, you you God, need to separate please. defending what she okay. did and defending what she said versus not wanting to punish people for something they said. Why shouldn't she be okay? Said. We can open it up. And I hope you're gonna. Why shouldn't, I hope be, gonna why really shouldn't enjoy she be punished for chasing down a fucking Parkland school shooting survivor while she's on? And and then a few couple of years later, she's on an education committee. You think she shouldn't be taken off that committee? Are are you no. insane? Not only no, not, that, not, not only hunting them down. I don't think, con no, I don't think a, Congress wait. should be taking people off committees. No, and if you if you support that, that then I hope you really enjoy after the Republicans retake the House in 2022 when we strip AOC and Ilhan Omar and all them of their committees. Is that the kind of country you want? Where now that when when the GOP takes over, we we just get to strip a bunch of Democrats Look, well, from their the, committees? The 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 Omar was the goal. Great case. job! Like what a great president! Yeah, this is going to be on the one at a time. He can only respond to one of you. All right. Right, so we'll go to uh, DB. Finish your point, DB. Um, and then we'll go to uh, um, uh, Demon Mama. And oh, then Vadim. Okay. Okay. I, 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 just, I just got... I, if Ilhan Omar or AOC... I'm not a leftist, by the way. If they were on tape chasing down the survivor of a school shooting and calling them a coward and, and saying that they're funded dude, by George Soros... nobody defends that. You quit dude, acting like you're so, no, listen, so listen, virtuous listen, for listen, attacking listen, that. No, no, listen, nobody's I'm, defending I'm, no, that's that. Not, yeah, I'm, I'm attacking... I'm a, to be clear... I'm attacking you for saying that person shouldn't be on a should should be on an education committee that they shouldn't have been stripped from that committee. I'm attacking you for saying that. I think I think that's a fucking terrible look for the Republican Party, and you should be ashamed that that you're defending this person. Pragmatically speaking, there's no difference between saying the thing X is good and the thing X shouldn't warrant consequences. If lecture fan says, "Oh, I don't support that," but I don't think there should be any consequences for it. Those are functionally identical. Look, I actually disagree with you, Doobie, though. Unfortunately, what LCTR, sorry, what Lecture Fan is doing right now is the optimal strategy for him and his party. See, conservatism, oh, no. the Republican Party in this country, has never been able to logically defend any of the positions that it holds. It has always relied exclusively on fear baiting and, um, and the, the patriotic uh, signaling to its base. So how how far back thing... do you want to take that historical argument? Oh, sorry, sorry. How I'm sorry. Matt, wait, wait, hold on. Sorry. When I, I, I apologize. That was wrong of me. When I say always, I broadly mean since like the um, the Southern strategy and since the Nixon amendment. Yeah, about since that time. Past that point, of course, things get very different. But to continue with my point, and thank you for allowing me to clarify. Um, right now, like the Republican Party is pure dogma. 
the Trump administration has at no point attempted to legislate based on some sort of empirical or reasonable understanding of proper governance or with any meaningful goals in mind. Um, it's just about power. And at the end of the day, that's all politics is about. And they'll keep gathering power until one day they are strong enough to do all the things you think they're not capable of doing. The appropriate response is to recognize on our side too, the Democrats and the leftists, that politics is all about power. Uh, lecture fan, you said, what happens then when you guys take power again and take all of our people off committee seats? The answer is that you should never take power again. That's the goal. And we can do that True. if we get rid of the electoral college. It wouldn't take very much. You guys need affirmative action to stand a shot in national elections. If we took care of that, you would be cast into the dustbin of irrelevance. You can have your state elections. We'll take D.C. and Puerto Rico, and the Senate will be ours for 100 years. Um, Let me ask you this. How did, how did uh, it work to get rid of the judicial filibuster? Uh, how did that turn. work for you? How did that work for my Harry turn. and the Democrats get rid of the judicial filibuster? I know you want to try more, but it's my turn. It's my turn. Uh, right? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. supposed to go after after. Sure, Jimmy, sure, right? sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah go but, for it. Uh, yeah, okay. So there's a couple of things I wanted to to talk about here. First of all, the idea that, like, that, that like, uh, I mean, it's just very bald faced at how Electrofan looks at politics. I mean, it is well within the rights of the of the, I mean, the committees are an internal process to the to the uh, to the representatives to the Congress. That's an internal process. Like they can do that, and they have every right to. And not only that, but I would say they have not not just do they have the right to do so. They have the ju the moral justification. You're asking these people to work aside someone who's advocated for them being killed. Like that's ridiculous. No one has any right to be forced to co to try and co work with somebody like that. And then secondly, um, I just wanted to take a small uh, issue with what Eris was saying. I don't believe that people like MTG um, deserve any sympathy whatsoever because uh, MTG, if you actually look at the record of her posts, the blogs that she was writing, she is the one who helped manufacture this. No joke. QAnon became largely popular because she was pushing it from her blog, which had a lot of readership, and then that spun out from there. Marjorie Taylor Greene is part and parcel with everything that is wrong with our country right now, with the fake, the creation of fake news and alternate realities. That's her. And yes, while I do have sympathy for people who become roped in by these incredibly manipulative ideologies, I do not have sympathy for those who create them, who those for those who use them to self-enrich like Marjorie Taylor Greene does, and for those who use them to undermine democracy in its entirety. And I do tend to agree, by the way, with Vosh uh, when he says that the, uh, a mo that the modern Republican Party is a totally obsolete and complete, almost unsalvageable um, institution. 60% of the party uh, just recently polled that they would go and not, not, they would literally leave the Republican Party to join the Trump Patriot Party. These people are in a cult that worships Donald Trump, and that is not democratic. What you are advocating for, Electrofan, and I know you're one of Trump's biggest cheerleaders. I know that's like your main thing is you fucking love that guy, just like all the other cultists in the country. And guess what? We don't live in a country that's a dictatorship. We live in a democracy. So with all due respect, I'm very happy to know that if they decide to do that, they'll never have a shot at winning again, and I will be more than happy to accept that type of future. Okay, so we're going to go to Vadim. Oh, you got sure. your hand up, uh, uh, Dylan? All right, so we'll go to uh, uh, Vadim, Dylan, uh, then Connor. Then I'm going to uh, step in because I want to say something. Sure. Uh, maybe to uh, let your fans point. Go ahead. Okay, well, first of all, I just want to clarify that with the David Hogg thing, not only did she harass him, but afterwards she um, basically said that he was a crisis actor or something of the sorts. And she did so inside of posts as well. Um, I think that this absolutely has to happen because, I mean, we could point to other individuals within politics who have uh, sort of almost crossed this line, but it's just like, if if we do not set some sort of example, we're just it's going to get worse and worse. There, you know, she she it probably still will get worse, considering that she got a standing ovation after her um, after her her speech on the matter from the Republican Party. I, I mean, that's that that's uh, I I guess there's no video of it, but that's those are the reports. So yeah, it absolutely has to happen because the, politicians have to know that there are consequences for things like this and and lecture fan i just what i'm hearing from you throughout this entire conversation is that you are just 
like very opposed to consequences and you will twist these things around to be either oh you're you're anti free speech or you just hate cops when you these these are the, the consequences of these actions these are not kind of unjustified demands from people who have a loathing of of freedom of speech it's just it, it's it's an absolutely bad faith argument or just a fundamental like colossal cosmic misunderstanding of what the fuck we're all saying here dude hey vadim did you ever agree with the idea that you may you maybe won't agree with everything somebody says but you'll fight for the right to say it did you ever agree with that principle yeah and, and really of course what if you're well, fighting well, for the I, right for other I, people I, to try I, to have I, you killed I, 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 I do, but I, I'm not going to. I mean, it's 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 sort of um. There are certain things that that in certain circumstances where there are consequences for for speech. Speech is not something that 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 like you know that it, 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 people have a right to react to it. And people who I mean, the majority of Americans that 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 have been polled do not think that Marjorie Taylor Greene should have the responsibilities that she has on an educational committee. I mean, it's it's just. Uh, uh, okay, you know what? I, I'm gonna just well, the whole the someone whole freedom else of speech over. argument is a red herring thing anyway, because freedom of Absolutely. speech does not yeah it does not cover your ability to be in congressional uh, committees. The yeah. First Amendment doesn't rule on that. This isn't yeah. about free speech. This has nothing to do with fighting to defend the right. For blah blah. This is nothing. It's complete. But that's LCTR uh, fan, right? I mean, uh, uh, boy, Dylan, go ahead. So I do want to also bring up the fact that uh, there is a lot of fights for committee seats all the time, very powerful committee seats, and whether the Democrats or Republicans can get these seats. And I'm pretty sure that AOC has actually been denied a few powerful seats in her time for things she said about other Democrats. Was that the suppression of her speech? No, that was her reaping e either in, either for good reason or for bad reason the consequences of her stepping up to powerful people in the institutions of her party that wasn't the violation of the first amendment that was uh what people didn't that was people within the democratic party saying you know what i think because you spoke out against this i don't want you in this powerful position thank you very much this has happened within the republican party this has happened within the democratic party this has happened a million times before this is just a different aspect of it this is a this person is so uh out of line that we don't want them anywhere near a committee seat, uh, and we're now going to have a vote to have them not near the educational committee seat, where they basically say that all these school shootings were staged and that and harass school shooting victims. Now, I do want to make bring up the fact that it, it, we're not just talking about like an isolated instance of some people defending her. Kevin McCarthy has has done circles of condemning what she says, but then really kicking down the the can of whether there should even be a vote. Then when there was a vote. There's 210 Republicans in the House of Representatives. Only 11 voted to strip this up. Only 11 voted to strip her of this of 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 this responsibility. This, while a lot of them are not <laughs> a QAnon or or believe that Hillary Clinton filleted children or that Jewish space lasers have have destroyed California. Sorry for all the Jewish space laser enthusiasts in chat. Um. They probably are complicit or willing to accept it to an extent in order to maintain power. They're willing to accept that type of action or dialogue or talk within their party and with those people having committee seats because those committee seats are strong enough and powerful enough to want to just grab them at all, all stakes. And when you have such a close vote, when you're so close to having a majority within the House, you're going to want every single person possible to get that majority. And, may, and Taylor Greene's part of that effort to get that majority. And I do want to say that when we talk about percentages of, of the party, like 60 percent will leave or these many percentage of Republicans, over 70 percent think the election was widespread fraud or any of this. I mean, FDR in the 1930s, 83 percent of Republicans thought that FDR could possibly bring about a dictatorship because he was doing the New Deal and all these new social programs. Due to the demonization of different political figures, it can quickly, polling could just escalate to a point where you can get rid asked ridiculous questions and get ridiculous answers because we've been having ridiculous dialogue around our politics. Um, with FDR, of course, the demonization of him as some as some dictator coming about when you know he was just doing the New Deal, or with Nancy Pelosi and Hillary Clinton being pedophile 
um, satanic torturing of children, Jewish space laser, g- a g- mass shooting organizer, evil individuals. I mean, this is just the end result of the dialogue we've been having in our country. I, I want to touch and on that. And I think, I didn't think major, ter- major, yeah, no, no problem. Major e. Taylor Green um, uh, is, is <sighs> one of the people who would push that dialogue to get even worse, not better. And so for therefore, I don't think she should have committee hearings. And I hope she, as soon as possible, gets voted out of her uh, out of her seat. And I would hate to be somebody who had her represent me in Congress because I would be extremely ashamed. And now I give Vosh permission to talk because I'm such a gracious. Wait, I, can, what about counterpoints? It's, it's, it's counterpoints. I just, I, I just uh, want to be fair. Damn. Yeah. No, Vadim, I actually appreciate the consistent backup. I don't. I don't. You know, I can throw elbows if I need to, but there's plenty of big egos here, so I don't want to be rude or shitty. Um, so, so here, here's the thing kind of about like demon mama and Vosh's perspective that like, um, conservatives are just going to be the new like fascists or whatever. And that the, the future of the party is the, the, the old fascists too. Hold on. I'm fascist too. No, I said they're the old fascists too. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, okay. So, so basically like this can become a self-fulfilling prophecy and the way that it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy is we don't inject like a level of nuance or charitability or interest like like anything into fucking uh public discourse we don't we automatically assume that people are like either interpersonally or systemically racist we close our minds to new ideas um there there are plenty of ideas that four years ago i would have been calling people inside this room commie fucking scum that i am more receptive to now i still have my beefs with it i'm gonna yell at you about the parts that i have fucking beefs with but i'm a lot more receptive to these ideas so discourse actually does have its role in here and politics is not just about power like i do understand that it's about power but it's also about reciprocal power there there's there is my belief and i I think it can be substantiated is that people are temperamentally different whether or not they're the nature or nurture doesn't fucking matter some people are liberal some people are progressive some people are conservative and these things are rooted in both environment and like nature and fucking nurture so to just demonize an entire category of temperament it's not going to fucking work you have to live with these people you have to convince these people you have to use rhetoric in order to convince these people and then on top of that i'm going to shout out two fucking people and then i'll shut the fuck up number one Endernax is probably fucking shitting blood in the fucking, you know, the comment section right now, because basically he is fighting for the fucking soul of the right. He is saying that there's a new path forward besides Trump MAGA or corporatist Republicans, and there's a way to fucking fight on the right in order to make it a better fucking thing. But we need to have that fucking dialogue in order to do it. And then finally, I just want to point out, banning the Electoral College leads to a Republican downfall. That was actually countered by my uh, very good friend, best friend, LSP, Liberty Sanity Project, who basically said what happens once you ban the uh, Electoral College is political institutions through their very nature of needing to seize power will change their strategy. So basically what would happen is the Republican Party would have to become less racist. They would have to become more inclusive. They would have to fix their fucking arguments and they would have to pitch it to a new generation of fucking people. That's the advantage of Republican democracy is that you have to go where the fucking people go. That's all also the danger. I know I went all over the fucking map and didn't make any coherent points, but I hope I at least gave people some food to some mental food yeah, to chew I, on. I just the thing is like I understand that you that you want to advocate for us communicating with the Republicans and not generalizing the Republicans, but the fact of the matter is that the Republicans fall in line with their worst elements every single time. And this is a problem that we have to acknowledge. And keep in mind, they don't win. They, they they just don't have they don't even have the numbers to win they have to cheat to win and they do that and by cheat i mean they have to fudge the numbers not literally cheat they have to use things like gerrymandering technicalities that are obviously unethical and unjust in order to gain positions of power but what's worse again even even if we're not going to get into that whole rabbit hole of talking about how we reform functional democracy the problem that we have is that they stand in line next to their worst elements they stand up and they don't denounce donald trump when he does blatantly racist things they don't they literally i mean fuck it's really funny that lecture fan has spent all this time like protecting free speech when fucking marjorie taylor green is trying is literally the first action she took as a junior representative was to fight was to try and push for biden's impeachment like it's like okay what if removing your your committee holdings like just justly through due process is is uh is removing your free speech what does that categorize as these people are completely unhinged and i say this on my stream very frequently and i i message this out at this point i'm speaking to the audience which is that People need to realize that the that the conservative wing of the Republican Party, the hardcore conservative wing of the Republican Party that's all on board with Trump, these people are not just holding back the left. 
they're holding back everyone. Every other type of worldview that's not a weird pseudo-feudalistic Trump cult, these people are weighing down everyone. They're weighing down the, the moderate righties. They're weigh, weighing down the moderate lefties. They're weighing down the extreme left. They're weighing down everybody. And if we don't recognize that, then you're going to get stuck with people like Lecterfan running our country who will make excuses for people spreading conspiracies about Jewish space lasers and advocating for their coworkers to be fucking strung up. It's ridiculous. We have to be able to say no. Enough is enough. And if we want to have a functional democracy, we have to say no to fucking fascists. And guess what? That means if the moderate Republicans are going to stand next to those fascists, well, guess what? They're standing in lockstep, and we gotta we gotta focus on them too. They're just as bad if they do that. Okay, so oh, I'm oh, oh, wait, oh, wait, I wanted to jump in a while ago. May I? Sure. Okay. So a couple of points here. First of all, Dylan, you were speaking on um, sensationalism and and paranoia and fear mongering on both sides which I can agree to, usually that's a pretty bipartisan thing, being very hyperbolically against what your opposition is and does. But I wanted to say that when we're talking about the Democrats, even just liberals, not even progressives or leftists, um, they were pretty on the money <coughs> with Trump. They said that Trump would be like a xenophobic, um, like a police state enabling fascist who would attempt to initiate a coup while uh, pulling his party away from reality, and every single one of those points ended up being true. Even the Russiagate stuff, which people make fun of libs for, a bipartisan senatorial committee found that those claims were largely valid. What were the rights saying about Obama? The FEMA death camps? I mean, the 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 degree to which these uh, criticisms are leveled in reality is is completely different. It's it's so different. But with regards to um, also what um what Counter said. Obviously, discourse does matter. That's my job. And talking to folks does matter. But it's harmful to the country and to human life to pretend that a party isn't fascist when it is. This has been the long-term sort of direction of the Republican Party's movement for a good while now. And at the end of the day, there are only a couple of ways stuff like this ends. If you're taking a look right now at um, popular polling for Trump within the Republican Party or advocacy for the Patriot Party or anything like that, you know the Republican Party is not going to skip back over to neoconservatism anytime soon. They're all in, and they will be for a while. And this usually ends in one of two ways. Either uh, the fascist wing of a government uh, takes control and burns itself out through warfare, or revolution, or uh, they are supplanted by the left-wing elements of the government until whatever socio-political impulses are driving people down that road stop. In our case, what we should probably be doing is taking a better look at our broadcasting and education systems, because all the methods by which fascism is spreading in America can be traced pretty easily back to a select number of political and corporate interests. We can work on that. And the ideal would be for people of a fascist inclination to stop and to educate themselves. And the only way we're going to do that is if we wrest some control over the institutions by which these people have been propagating themselves. Okay, so I'm going to go, I see Arison Duby, I'm going to go with you, and then I'll go to Dylan afterwards. Um, I want to uh, say, though, I mean, to, uh, <clears throat> to Bosch's point there, um, like, all, any leftist here, right, could probably, like, point out a dozen uh, statements from other members of Congress, right? They're fucking off the wall, right? Things they've said, like, while they were in office, right? Um, and if that's the case... Right then, why uh, why is it that we aren't extending this out, out further? Right? Why aren't other uh, members of Congress, Republican members of Congress, up for the chopping block? Sure. Um, it, sure. But okay. But like, can we run uh, Congress like that? Uh, I mean, it 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 feels like to me like uh, uh, we all know here. I'm, I'm a fan of the Republican Party, right? Um, but it feels like to me that we have a party um, that is going through a moment in time. Uh, where um, uh, conspiracies abound, right? And many members of the uh, uh, of the Republican Party, the elected members, believe the exact same things um, Marjorie has said, right? She, they've said some of them, um, and and other things they've they've been smart enough to keep quiet about, right? Um, so, like, if that's the case, then it seems like our hatred is being forced on this one particular woman, right? I do not like, but this one particular woman. When we have an entire party, we had a president himself 
engage in exactly this type of behavior, right? So it feels like we're, we're trying to like um, uh, stop a, a dam from breaking here uh, because they'll be more like it. So, and if that's the case, how can we run a Congress, right? Um, by uh, just taking away these, um, like stopping, we can't stop all of them from having committee member seats, right? That's not possible. So uh, is it right to just focus on this one lady? All right, so I'm going to go to uh, uh, Aris uh, and, and then Doobie and then um, Dylan. I just want to say that what Demon Mama was saying was super based. Um, and I really, really appreciated. Like, it, it's such an interesting point to bring up how much Donald Trump's, like, angle of right rightism um uh has just taken the american right in this really dangerous direction not saying the religious direction was um was great either but there were other directions that were still useful um i mean 20 years ago one of the most common debates you would be seeing is whether or not you should intervene in a foreign mm -hmm. conflict now there's it's rare that we even have that conversation and that's a really important issue there's like tons of things that used to be like real topics that were debated between republicans and democrats that are just not talked about because we're just so obsessed with debunking these conspiracy theories and these lies that have just like completely taken over political discourse okay uh doobie then dylan then vadim i see you. um yeah well i so like I said at the start of this, I'm a nice person, right? <sighs> um, I honestly feel like this has been kind of a circle jerk with like lecture fan in the middle. Um, and you know, he brought up a couple arguments at the start, uh, you know, freedom of speech, um, you know, she deserves a committee spots, whatever. I, I think it's been demonstrated by just about everybody that, that those are really bad arguments. Um, in lecture, I, I'd, I'd love to believe that your brain doesn't work this way. <laughs> so like, do you have any response? To, to that to to because because to me right I, like i said earlier i'm not a, i'm not a leftist i'm not i'm not a republican i'm not even like pro-democracy most of the time i, I can be pr pretty anti-democratic right really on, on certain topics um but i feel like if you do care about the republican party conservatism and libertarianism whatever the fuck your thing is um shielding people like this were just fucking toxic, right? Clearly toxic uh, to, to the party, to its stated goals, right? To, to I'm sure the, the sort of shit you want to get done in society it seems like a really bad strategy, right? So I, I'm just wondering, like, what, what do you have any response to, to any of the things people? Dude, all, yeah, about? all the all the Republicans have to do is just to let you leftists continue to act like you're acting right now. This is mccarthyism oh times a hundred this is the re most insane conspiracy theory nonsense i've ever heard there's a nazi around every corner there's a there's a fascist and a nazi everywhere this is this is literally just like mccarthyism where you're like you're except instead right of going now. after communists it's going after nazis and fascists it's like you guys think that there's like a bunch of nazis and fascists in in the united states and there just aren't there, uh, there's maybe like 0.0001% okay, of people are actual Nazis right and you guys are acting like there's like 90% of Republicans are Nazis. It may seem like it's un absurd. It's McCarthyism stupid, and it's conspiracy theory. But this is actually optimal political strategy. The conservative right in this country has completely abandoned any kind of logic based premise for its arguments. Having idiots dogmatically spew nonsense has worked for them. It's worked for them for a long time. And with Donald Trump, they realized it works better than they ever imagined. At first, they opposed Donald Trump because he was boorish and stupid and hypocritical and unchristlike in a number of ways. But no, Republicans didn't give a fuck. It didn't matter. It didn't matter what he did as long as he said the right thing. So they all fell in line. And the Republican Party got more vo or Donald Trump got more votes in 2020 than any other presidential candidate in history with the exception of Joe Biden. And I'm glad Biden won, but the Republicans were still able to muster more support than ever before after four years of Trump's presidency. There is no return to reason for that party. The only thing that can happen is a collapse, and we need to facilitate that collapse by making them politically unviable. Such an extremist. Wow. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm pro-democracy. Uh, Dylan has You're been an extremist. Uh, waiting very... Uh, I'm extremely pro-democracy. <laughs> so uh, well, Dylan has been waiting very patiently, right? Then I said Vadim, and then we'll go uh, to uh, Dima Mama. But I do actually really want to engage with the topic that, like, um, the rest of the party, right? Like, 
Holy fucking but, shit, I want to bang. I think you would, a lot, many people here, apparently Bosch as well, right, thinks that uh, um, other members of the fucking party should be up, up for having their committee, uh, cities, committee seats stripped, right? But if that's the case, how can we actually uh, run this country? Right? We have to come to some sort of consensus uh, with the other side, right, to have a functioning government because we can't have one party rule. Um, so I feel like there's something we actually have to contend with here. Um, all right, go ahead. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to say there's a Nazi around every corner, but the threat of white supremacy is, is real in this country. It is, is a legitimate threat. Uh, it has been uh, a threat ever since the failure of Reconstruction to address white supremacy when we pulled our troops out of the South after uh, after the crushing of the first clan um we can just see after 9 11 the vast majority of of terror attacks have been white supremacist attacks we can see that if you look at polling of military soldiers you can see polling data continues to increase for the amount they see white supremacy and white nationalism in the military one in every two minority service member has said that they have shown a signs of white supremacy within the United States military, the most powerful military to ever exist on the planet. So this has become such a problem within the military that they're doing a full upscale, downscale review of to see if the white supremacy is is as infiltrated the United States military. Uh, we can just look at people like Dylan Roof. Uh, we can look at uh, the the Charlottesville or, or one of the best examples. We can just look at what happened at our nation's capital on the 6th when bombs were planted in the city that my mother lived and died in, when when the press were charged, and I was right in front of them when the press were charged, and they were beaten before having their cameras smashed. The Congress was rushed while they were screaming, uh, hang Mike Pence, uh, and cops were beaten to death, people died, and bombs were planted. It was a complete disaster. And so I don't want to say there's a Nazi or white supremacist in every quarter or everybody who carries a Republican card is a white supremacist. That would be extremely hyperbolic, and that would be inaccurate. But it is accurate to say that this nation has never dealt with, with, this, um, this, with the white supremacy that underlines a lot of uh, underlines a lot of the beliefs that I think some people hold, the white supremacy that is still a real threat to uh, to the public and to the deaths that are being caused by white supremacy today. Holy All fuck. right, All right we're going to go uh, Vadim, Dear Mama, Eris. Okay, so I, I guess I can only speak for myself. I, th I think, you know... I think that I'm speaking for most of the people on the panel who who are left, but you, you can let me know if I'm wrong. Um, you know, in where should I start? It, at the beginning of of the 9/11 conspiracies, I've always been sort of like into those conspiracies, just to, from a standpoint of like finding them fascinating. I think they're batshit. But what a lot of people don't realize today is that, um, in in great part, they were started by a hybrid of the wacko left, a, a section of the left that was kind of out there, and the libertarians. And why am I bringing this up? Because um, when all that started developing, I started looking at it and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe all this batshit is coming from the left. So I want to say that, let's say we had a candidate who was um, propo you know, uh, talking about that stuff all the time and related conspiracy theories. I would absolutely be in the same boat as I am here uh, with Marjorie Taylor Greene. So this is not like, this is not me being partisan here. This is about kind of conforming to reality and people just not being fucking crazy who are uh, running our government. And then the second thing that I wanted to say, just to sort of address what um, Prime K's, um, is it Prime Keys or, I'm sorry, I should, I should know that dude. Um, Prime Keys or Prime K's? Prime Kai, all wrong. Okay. Prime Kai. Okay, I, I apologize. I'm so Oof. bad with names. Historically bad with names. So it's 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 not not you. It's me. You could have um, pronounced it Bush though, but you know uh, some people do. I'm very forgiving. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but I just wanted to say that um, you know I I think your question was somewhere along the lines of you know because of the fact that we haven't held other people accountable is it fair to to hold her accountable now and 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 i think the maybe i'm misunderstanding your question but i think the 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 answer is absolutely yes because we have to start somewhere we have to start somewhere holding these people accountable showing that there are repercussions for this stuff and uh you know hopefully hopefully those repercussions will uh, kind of 
so at least somewhat quell the uh, just voluminous amount of bullshit that we're getting from the party. Hopefully those consequences will keep people who believe this stuff from spreading it, who want to go into office at, at the very least. So um, yeah, there you go. So it'll be uh, Demon Mama, Eris, and uh, Counterpoints. Um, right. Like, I don't know why you want to do the whole dicks movement. I don't know why, like, the jerk... Because I need I need attention. I'm oh, an attention-seeking person on a panel. I need to jerk off dicks or grab boobs or do magic fingers. There you go. I need to do something. All right. Okay. Um, but uh, but before you go, Demon Mom, just before you go, right, Um, to answer um, uh, um, the Demon's uh, question, the thing is, is that it's, it's not that, like, oh, we just haven't punished other people. It's that um, understanding that the Republican Party is the way it is now, right? Like that uh, we we've seen this um, playbook before, right? With in terms of the Tea Party, right? When the establishment was like like sort of against, right? But like flirting with like the Tea Party, right? Um, and then the Tea Party actually started taking seats in the in the Congress, right? And then took over uh, the uh, um, uh, the establishment. The establishment because it was the Tea Party, right? I feel like what we're seeing now. Uh, is the exact same playbook. So, uh, current, so they, they did the floating part, right? Now uh, the uh, QAnon is actually in the house, right? And soon we'll realize, look, we'll look around and realize it's the whole party. This is it, right? So we're going to get more of this, right? If they're living in a fact-free zone um, and, and we can denounce these, these things they say, like, I mean, I, I don't agree with uh, what they say, but like, how are we actually going to operate if so many more members of Congress, and I don't think you, you and many of you disagree with me on this one, so many more members of uh, the Republican uh, Party actually believe the exact same things, right? So uh, I'll go to uh, Demon Mama, uh, Aris, then um, Connor. Yeah, I really wanted to address uh, your point on this because, I mean, you you probably know from my appearances on your own show that this is a topic I've been talking about for a long time. And I think that the fact that we've only been able to even bring any sort of punitive action or cor I should say corrective, this isn't even punitive, this is corrective action against one member of the, of the, um, uh, the House of Representatives should be shocking to all of us. I think that we need to, that like Americans as a whole, and especially those who don't consider themselves a part of like the lecture fan QAnon faction of um like culty republicanism um need to realize that we are facing a pretty dangerous time that there are a lot of republicans in a lot of positions of power who are willing totally willing to stand by the most vicious anti-semitic um anti uh, uh, anti-black um anti-lgbt uh, things that you could imagine and they would gladly turn our country into some kind of pseudo feudalistic i mean literally they talk about they just want another four years another four years another four years forever and they gladly say this and and the fact of the matter is it doesn't look like we really have the institutions right now to actually deal with this, which is a scary thought. It is scary and it is concerning. And I think that it needs to be a reality check because we have to recognize that the Republican Party's entire strategy for what, the last 30, 40 years, maybe more, um, has been to basically break the government in every way imaginable so it's not functional to make way for what? Uh, their their pundits, their biggest pundits, including, by the way, Rush Limbaugh, the most listened to, uh, the most listened to radio figure in the world, not just on the right, in the world, advocate for civil war? What is the right pushing for in America? We know what the answer is. They tell it to us. They want a civil war. And what they're doing is they're breaking things like our institutions, like when Donald Trump broke down the USPS, when he tried to break down election systems, when they're trying to gerrymander the shit out of stuff so that nothing works. We have to face the fact that we are fighting, functionally, a virus on democracy, quite literally. And the cost has been already thousands upon thousands upon thousands of human lives. While Donald Trump jerked off in the White House and went on stupid press campaigns and press tours and blah, 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 400,000 Americans have been dying because he kept lying on a matter of fact. These are verifiable facts. This is not a matter of opinion. And the Republicans sit here every single day and they fill our airwaves with more lies, with more obfuscation. And this, to speak to P Prime Kai's point, is the state of America, whether you all like it or not. Everybody out there in chat, you got to realize this is the case. These numbers aren't going anywhere. And unless you're on board with the QAnon cult, well, you better consider how we're going to fight against them. Unfortunately, oh, just one really quick point. 
Unfortunately, sure. I think one of the worst rhetorical challenges we're going to be facing, and we progressives, leftists, isn't going to be moving Republicans to the left. I think they've chosen their lot. Most of them, not all, you can always convince some people, but most of them are what they are. The real difficult challenge is going to be convincing liberals that it's worth putting in the time and effort to meaningfully extricate this virus from American democracy. Because that's the trouble that I have. Well, you talk with a Republican, you're like, hey, you don't care when Trump lies and destroys democracy. They shrug. But you talk to a liberal, it can be really difficult, I think, for them to understand the extent to which these people have abandoned the principles that I think we assume every American who participates in democracy should have. Uh, so we'll go to Eris and then Connor. But um, uh, I mean, I'll say that the Republican Party is um, or not just the Republican Party, just like the conservative movement has has been on uh, a mission, right, to uh, provide completely different um, uh, and completely separate uh, media, media ecosystem, right, um, which is uh, delivered a completely different set of facts uh, to the to its listeners, right. And then, and so uh, we have a, a generation of um, uh, of Congress members, right, who've grown up in that, right, and like these are the the thoughts uh, and the conclusions that they've made, right. So like, um, it's like it's completely unsurprising that this we'll see more and more of this, right? Like, this is uh, the, the the project, and it's been successful. But understanding that, um, and understanding that it's terrible, I don't agree with it. But um, we have to we have to have a functioning government one way or the other. So we'll have to interact with these people one way or the other. And so let's figure out a way to do that, Harris. So I have a bit of a spicy take. I think that people need to be a little more critical of themselves and their own politics and examine like why did this new movement come up? I mean, I've heard lots of reasons but and i'm sure that there are but one of those reasons that you've had such a reactionary like movement um that we're seeing with this like you know new nationalist kind of idea that's being spread like trumpism is a reaction to um the identity politics obsessed left and i i could see you shaking your head to you mom i'm excited to hear I'll, you. I'll argue with you so hard on it and i'm excited to hear it but here's the thing when one of the problems is I genuinely think that, and most historians I've talked to agree, right, that Trump and this new movement reminds them of fascism, that when he speaks, the the language that he uses, um, the rhetoric and the uh, euphemisms is very, very similar of like that great man syndrome that we saw in the early 20th century of fascism. But none of that stuff gets taken seriously. Like just try to say, you know, um, you're concerned about new fascism in the United States, almost every right winger will just roll their eyes at you. And one of the reasons why is because that term is just meaningless now. It's no, just, it, it gets thrown I just, I around. No, yeah, but it gets, it gets thrown around. You know, like, the argument you're making right now is just is to yeah. tell, is telling the Jews to stop complaining so much. Oh, wait, oh fuck, I'm going to lose it. Oh, wait, hold on. Lose it. No, 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 demon, let her, let her finish her point. Every right, I think you have every right to complain, right? Like, that's that's not the issue. To me, the problem is like that reaction that so many leftists are participating in, okay? And I've seen it on this panel, I've seen it in my Discord server, I've seen it everywhere, where you just hear one person say something that doesn't tote that liberal identity politic line, right? And you just start throwing labels at them and being so incredibly uncharitable. And it means that yep. those labels that are so important, right, to us to be able to actually demonize problematic behavior that Trump has done, they, it though they become meaningless. Okay. Like I've been I called a fascist. Agree. I've been it, called a fascist. I can, right? like, uh, let it finish. No, I've been called a fascist just for saying an oath to the queen when I became a citizen of the of uh, of Canada, um, or for operating in a colonial university. Okay, um, I've seen people on this panel just like immediately take the most uncharitable views of everyone and just rage and just immediately just shout like shout out these labels and they've just become meaningless I'm not saying everyone in the left is responsible for this i'm not saying that the left is completely responsible for trump but i do think that there are people that have that this movement is in part a reaction to that okay wait hold on, wait, on. Okay. <clears throat> first of all I, and this needs wait to be dude I, I need this to be like under a minute i'm about to lose my shit <laughs> I also, that was directed at me, so I would like to respond. 
but go ahead. <laughs> okay, look, so, I just, I want to say this, okay? First of all, all political labels are misused by all groups, okay? Second of all, I'm really, like, no. Fascism in America did not come up because of irritating college students misunderstanding what, like, white privilege means. The, all of the, like, mainstream ideological tenets of the re modern Republican Party, all of these can be directly traced back to political and corporate actions taken by, like, people in positions of power who are conservatives. If you want to look at the attitude towards Muslims, we can look towards 9-11. If you want to look towards the LGBTQ movement, the attitudes towards that, we can look back decades and decades. That has nothing to do with identity politics. As for BLM, there are people in the Republican Party alive today who were also alive to throw rocks at black children integrating into schools back in the 1960s. So I, I just, uh, now there are a lot of really annoying left-leaning people who misuse this terminology and I dislike that and I do think it's counterproductive, but I think we are giving way too much credit to the id poll types by saying they're responsible for the advent of global fascism. It is something we're seeing around the world, not just in America. That's I, don't I think just said they've important. contributed to it. I didn't say. Well, that. sure. Okay, but... dude. Uh, I'm I'm a fucking loser. I gotta go. But also, go. well, what, listen. I was directly uh, I was directly targeted by Eris. Like Eris literally called me out by name. So I would like to be able to respond if that's fine. I know you have something Please. else you want to follow up about, but no, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Please. Appreciate. It. Listen, the 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 problem with this this idea that like uh that like fucking leftists will call anybody a, fa a fascist I, I can literally go watch the entire watch the entire history of my appearances on prime kai's there's probably been four or five separate times where i've had this exact discussion and every single time i explain precisely why hey what this is is fascism here is how it's fascistic here is how it has historical parallels here are the ide this is how we ideal ideologically identify fascism and you know what right-wingers do? They go, I don't fucking care. Because guess what? It's a sad fact that a lot of the right-wingers in this country actually do like fascism. And they won't admit it because they know it's a bad look. They know enough to know it's a bad look, but they'll still keep advocating for it. Like Donald Trump is a great example of this. And what it, it, they put a mask on. And no matter how careful you are with it, they'll always say, oh, the intolerant left, somebody online, some random account that's a 13 year old on Twitter once said that I was an imperialist because of this. And that's why I, I just I just had to look the other way when they decided to slam people into internment camps. It's ridiculous. It's patently ridiculous to its face. No matter how patient you are with the feelings of people who advocate for the policies of fascism in not calling them a fascist, you're only hurting yourself. And the fact of the matter is that America has been hurting itself by not being willing to admit that people who are advocating for fascist policy are fascists and call them what they are. And so I just reject this idea outright. And I think it is almost embarrassing that a student of history would ever is try to say that it is the fault or that it would even be marginally the fault of people who are trying desperately every single day with their platform to meaningfully and substantively call this out that it's like, oh, I got called an uh, imperialist on Twitter once and now I left the left and I don't believe in human rights anymore. That's ridiculous. And yes, I will mock it. And if that's you, well, then you're not an ally of mine. And guess what? I don't need to be an ally with fascists in this country because they are a minority. They just, you know, currently right now are able to wield certain levers in a way that keeps them power, and we all lose if that's the case. So it is, uh, it is in the in the it is in the interests of the audience that is listening to us right now, this broad audience of thousands of pounds, thousands of viewers, to recognize that there are fascists, yes, literal fascists. And if you don't believe me, go look it up. Go find out what fascism is and see if it's not exactly what the Republican Party has been pushing for for all of these years. And if you if you go do that and you come up with a different result, come to my channel and show me why I'm wrong. But I know you can't. All right. Counterpoints. OK, Jesus fucking Christ. All right. So so what basically happens is effectively we have, you know, fucking 20 minutes of fucking dialogue. That's all effectively from a progressive fucking lens. It largely fucking overlaps. I have to take 20 fucking notes and then I have fucking five minutes to respond to it. Like, like, listen, if you feel straw man, I'm sorry but this is just like fucking, it's built up for the past 15 minutes, okay? So acting like the entire right wing, 72 million people had no reason to vote for the fucking right in the presidential fucking election is a fucking delusion. Trump's a fucking piece of shit. He's a fucking, he would be a fascist dictator if he could, but asking like right people don't have fucking grievances is fucking wild to me, okay? Now these grievances can be wrong, but they can be rooted in a logic that perhaps you don't understand. As a person who comes from the right, 
I'll try to explain some of these fucking grievances, and I don't give a fuck whether or not you think they're justified, all right? Fiscal conservatism is largely rooted in the belief that we have a fiat currency. It's in the constant fear that we are going to go into too much debt and that we're going to overprint money and eventually the U.S. dollar is going to be worth, worthless, okay? MMT, modern monetary theory, might have solved this. Keynesian economics might have fucking solved this, but at the same time, this is used as a cudgel to beat working class, middle class, and upper class fucking Americans into the fear that Democrats are going to, like, uh, through social programs and welfare programs and perverse incentives and all that kind of shit, they're going to effectively tank the economy of the United States of America. And when you post to socialist, or when you point to fucking socialist fucking nations that have largely fucking fell flat on their fucking dicks within the first 20 years of their inception, it's all, like, when you're talking to leftists, not liberals or progressives, it's always blamed on American imperialism and not internal economics. It's very frustrating. That's point one, by the way. Okay, nationaliz nationalization of fucking health services. A lot of fucking boomers made a lot of fucking money. They made more money than I fucking did. And they're worried that a, national a nationalized fucking health service, that they're going to face wait times similar to fucking countries in the Commonwealth, and that effectively those wait times are going to fucking kill them. On a utilitarian basis, the European fucking healthcare model is infinitely better than the fucking American model. But at the same time, for individual conservative boomers who have made a lot of money and who can pay for their own fucking healthcare, it is effectively asking them to die early. Now, you can pretend that that's not the case, but it's fucking true. Homosexuality and transgenderism is the anti homosexuality and anti transgenderism is largely rooted in fucking religion. OK, now 70 percent of the United States of America is still religious. It doesn't matter if they're cr fucking Christer Christians or fucking Muslims or fucking whatever. They're still religious. So whether or not you think that's a good reason for them to be conservative, that's part of the reason why they're conservative. Pedogate and fucking Pizzagate acting like Jeffrey fucking Epstein wasn't hitting fucking golf balls with Donald Trump and at the Clinton's fucking wedding. And on top of that, he had a shitload of fucking super rich and super powerful fucking people on his planes, f likely fucking underage prostitutes. And these people are in positions of power inside the United States. While I don't think that Hillary Clinton is perfect, like uh, uh, individually filleting fucking human children for adrenochrome, chances are that some of our public representatives have fucked underage prostitutes and it's been used as fucking blackmail for political leverage. It's probably fucking true. And I would like to see any fucking argument to the count. Yeah, one of them I'll wrap the it presidency up. But fucking, okay, so I'll, I'll wrap it up in a fucking second. The left, whether it likes it or not, just through the sheer advocacy of socialism, basically banning the owner class, whether that's petite bourgeois or fucking bourgeois, rubs a lot of Americans wrong. American culture and American history is often rooted in colonialism. It's also rooted in entrepreneurships. So whether or not most Americans are fucking entrepreneurs, most Americans want to own a business. They want to be fucking small owned businesses. So when you're small business owners. So when you say, I want to ban the fucking owner class, you're basically pissing off a large part of American culture. Finally, gun culture. It was tough for me to vote for fucking Biden because of his gun control policies. You say nobody's coming for your fucking guns. Nobody's coming for your fucking guns. Nobody's coming for your fucking guns. And then you look at the stated fucking platform of the Democrat Party, and it's some of the strictest gun control this country has ever fucking seen. So what's very frustrating for me in this fucking conversation is pretending that everybody on the right is a maggotard, that everybody on the right is a crypto fascist, that everybody on the fucking right doesn't have a reason to vote for the fucking right. And this is effectively why for the past 40 minutes, this has been a left wing fucking circle jerk beating up on lecture fan, because you don't think that there's any arguments on the right that are worth fucking having. But so all of it's not I'm kind it's of stand exhausted. By. They stand by. They stand by. That's wait, the problem. Wait, 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 it's not. Wait, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. You don't even need to go that far. All the arguments that you just made are perfectly valid. They're also about the same ones that Nazi citizens would have made in the 1930s. In retrospect, yeah, there were a lot of reasons to, to support the appointment of Hitler as chancellor. Yeah, there were great economic crises, and we were made to fear the communist threat, you know? Yeah, we were terrified of uh, transgender and homosexual research and the degeneracy. Of oh, the okay, okay, good point. Um, well, do the you only point that I'm Nazis, making, the, or do you address their concerns? Wait, the only point, well, in that case, in, historically speaking, addressing their concerns means kowtowing to fascism. 
And I'm not saying. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Um, so, how, sorry, wait, sorry how for interrupting. Sorry for interrupting. I've been very patient for 20 minutes. I've been very patient for 20 minutes. No, because this is where we fundamentally disagree. In the 1920s and the 1930s inside the United States of a fucking America, f- guess what? Fucking fascism and communism were incredibly fucking popular in subsects of the fucking population. The reason why is because the material conditions within fucking America were so fucking shitty that people were looking for a new fucking, uh, looking for a new way out. We're effectively in the same gilded age that we were in the 20s and 30s in America. And FDR, despite being vilified, was the person who saved capitalism uh, through redistributive economics. So we effectively have three, one thing going on in three options. The one thing going on is the material conditions for Americans are so fucking dog shit that we're looking to authoritarian ideologies in order to solve our problems. Our options are communism or socialism, fascism, or saving capitalism. Those are the three fucking options that we have. First of all, I strongly disagree with the idea that it's poverty or concern with the economic well-being of the working class that leads people to support Trump because wealthier people are more likely to support Trump than poor people. The working poor are more likely to vote Democrat. Second of all, the main reason why Nazism fell out of favor in the United States in the 1930s was because we started going to war with Nazi Germany. If you actually look at support, like public support for Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party, it wasn't because of the, uh, the, the product of New Deal policies. It was because we declared war in that government, and then we learned about the Holocaust. So in those cases- And what we- about in Germany? What, what if you in were Germany, in Germany, Germany and not in the United States? In, what if you were in Germany and not the United States? How would you combat the Nazi party? Well, in the, I mean, you would die in the 30s if you were trying to combat the Nazi party. Yeah, that is not a great response. And you'd be killed by the state. They would shoot you in the back of the head. The goal is to get it. The, the goal is to not reach that point. All I'm saying is that you can find, quote unquote, legitimate arguments for citizens supporting the rise of fascist governments. At the end of the day, a fascist government is a fascist government. I don't really care. I, all I care about is preventing it. I don't really care about your concerns, especially since a lot of these concerns are rooted in, 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 in delusion. What? Poor, pe- poor Republicans think that Republicans are going to be the I'm ones to fix the economy? Saying, I'm not saying you solve these things. I'm not saying you solve these things with policy. I'm saying you solve these things with rhetoric. Wait, I, and the wait, rhetoric, I love rhetoric. By the way, by the way, the answer, one of the answers to your question is how do you, how do you fight this thing? And I do agree, by and large, the goal is to stop before that. But just so you know, the first Antifa, yeah, anti-fascistische action in Germany was predominantly made up of Jews fighting back against fascism. So, I don't know, maybe you ought to think about supporting those Antifa guys wait, that you always- Wait, 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 hold, wait, hold Antifa on, Antifa isn't an organization, it's an ideology. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I agree. It's gonna be a whole thing, it's gonna be a whole wait, thing. Wait, I agree. Uh, uh, I'm pro-Antifa. I'm pro-Antifa. I just want to feel like we didn't address the root of the point there. So, um, counterpoints. You're saying we should use rhetoric. I agree. We should try to convince Republicans of moving over. The counter argument I was making was that you were saying there are other legitimate reasons to support Trump. I don't think people vote in fascist governments because in their head they're like, I'm pro-fascism. I think they fall prey to a number of political and neurological conditions, which lead them to believe that that's the right road to go down. So what would you suggest then? I want to politically disempower these people. I think that's perfectly defensible. I also want to talk with them, argue against their points. But in my experience, arguing with fascists usually doesn't change that many minds. Most of the converts I get are from moderate conservatives or from liberals. And while there are people I pull from the far right, they're usually really young. Older people who are cemented in their values, whether or not those values are fascism, are way less likely to be moved over. And that's the base of the Republican Party. So what do we do so, here? Can, I can address this in a closing statement. I do want to hear from Vadim, so waiting patiently. Dylan, did you agree with everything that um, uh, uh, Bosch was saying there? Because it seemed like you, were, you had a disagreement there. Um, am I wrong to, to have read into that? I just want to know. Can't hear you, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Okay, sorry, I was, I was muted. Um, <laughs> Uh, I I know I, I don't I don't know I I'm so lost at this point. The topic was the Taylor Green. Um, I wanted to build off of something earlier. I'll just speak whenever I'm given. Okay, time we'll go to Vadim first, and then we'll come back to you. All right. Okay, so I just want to speak very quickly. I know it's backtracking a little bit to what Eris said about um, Idpol. 
I think fundamentally, when you make that argument that um, I, th I think it's it, it comes down to the argument that you're making is that those who are marginalized are responsible for their own marginalization. So I think it's a, a it's a bullshit argument. And um, I, I, I understand, like Vosh said, that there are elements of the left that can be annoying, but they're very but don't forget, they're they're often magnified, cherry picked and just uh, demonized, made into something that they are not and made into a much more gar gargantuan to enforce than they happen to be by the right. So don't buy into that. Uh, like, like that's all I can say about that. The next thing that I want to say is in terms of addressing all this, this problem that we have, I think that there are possibly some things that would make a small dent because I agree with Vosh that, that most people are pretty set in their beliefs at a certain point in their life, unless they happen to be uh, kind of a, an uncommon individual. And um, so I do think that we can create, um, you know, maybe talk to people who are experts at disseminating information and whatnot, come up with some aggressive campaigns that target everyone that will improve media literacy and perhaps uh, basic scientific knowledge. But yes, again, a lot of these people are going to be resistant to that. So I think that we're looking at a very long-term project here. I think that media literacy needs to be start being a a, a part of our, our of our educational system. I think that that we have to be more aggressive. Like, like I think we have to come up with new strategies with our teaching systems in public and hopefully private schools as well that kind of push these things. And that you know we 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 have we need to like create panels to to um, you know devise what these strategies will be and how exactly these things will be taught. But you you really have to start with the youth for the most part and get at them as aggressively as you can in order to kind of stave off the um, the chance, or not stave off, but, but uh, hopefully eliminate the chance of them later in life turning to batshit. And uh, yeah, so I do think ultimately it's kind of a long-term project, unfortunately. So there you go. I said, I think I said a lot and um, we're probably heading towards the end. So uh, I'll just leave it at that. Dylan. So when you look at 1932, when, when FDR first took office, uh, you know, one out of every four Americans was out of work. Uh, millions were, were homeless, unemployed, or, or had economic destitution forced upon them. The German-American Bund was ga gaining popularity. Uh, these, I, th I believe it was the Silver Shirts or the Silver Legion was also gaining uh, its original prominence. And um, radical, uh, radical ideas were gaining more and more prominence, and conspiracy theories about the Jews were also uh, growing, uh, not only in America, but in other uh, places of the world, uh, namely Germany. Um, and the thing that ended up sending America on a better path than it could have gone down was bold action. And you know what? What I said about uh, FDR possibly being a dictator and 83% of Republicans looking at FDR saying this guy could bring about dictatorship. He looked at that number and he said, I don't care. And he did it anyway. He did He did his policies. He kept going and he got bold. He did big things because at the end of the day, somebody can like say your policies suck, what you're doing sucks. They can say you're bad and you're evil and you're all this stuff. But when your policies just work, when you drag a country out of a depression, when you give millions work, when you're able to lower the unemployment rate, when you're able to do this public works program, when you're able to electrify the rural communities, the very rural communities which are not supposed to even support you, lowering the child mortality rate, increasing the amount of, of, of rural communities to be able to refrigerate food, this is the stuff that ends up uh, taking out the fuel from people who want to radicalize people. Now, obviously, in the modern age with the online sphere, there's another factor to this, but this prime component is still there. In order for us to uh, undermine these these radical groups and these in these radical individuals that are bringing people down the dark path, you need to eliminate the fuel for that, which is economic desperation, destitution, and the one thing that was not solved during the 1930s, the failure of reconstruction and, and uh, directly going after the issue of white supremacy uh, in institutions and as a general concept after the failure of reconstruction. And I would, of course, say that there's another thing that needs to be done here, which is secondary to this, which is confronting uh, conspiracy peddling and the modern media sphere and how it, it profits off of consp uh, conspiracy peddling. So here, 
here, here's a few things to address this. I think this has gotten way far away from the original to- uh, content topic, which was Taylor Green. But um, it seemed to be going down. How do you deal with radicalism in the modern age? And that, that that's what I believe. Okay, uh, so we'll do this. I can get um, final statement. Sure. So what uh, what we'll do. Um, to my audience members, uh, I'm going to give all these people an outro and a final statement. Um, uh, but the stream is unending. The stream is ending. Now, oh, God, the stream is unending. We're going to go into our walk-on panel afterwards where uh, members of my audience can uh, join in. We'd love to have you. But uh, before that happens, hey, make sure to hit that follow button if you're here uh, for the first time enjoying this content. Hit that follow button. Hit that notification bell. Um, because we do these uh, all the time. Uh, we have uh, fantastic panelists like this, um, with great conversations. So if you want to uh, uh, see more of that, and of course, if you want to uh, be a part of all this, yes, hit that follow button. Uh, we're going to do a lot more stuff. Uh, so uh, beyond what we're doing today, uh, we'll have our Amazon Lily panel uh, tomorrow. That's our uh, female panel uh, talking about issues important to women um, and uh, non-binaries. Uh, so uh, come back for that. That's Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, on Wednesday, we'll have the uh, uh, debate between uh, Doobie uh, here, uh, our uh, frog Sith overlord, um, and a uh, good friend, uh, Mr. Fanatic, on religion, um, actually. On uh, Thursday, we're going to have our All Black Everything panel. If you can't figure out what we talk about there, then don't come. Uh, we don't need you. Um, but uh, also uh, on um, uh, Saturday, uh, we are going to uh, fully launch our Primetime Royale um, program that we've uh, alpha tested last uh, uh, Saturday and we'll uh, beta test this Wednesday as well. Um, uh, Primetime, you guys seem to really, really enjoy it. So um, we're going to uh, do uh, do more of that, hopefully work out all the uh, <laughs> the bugs and launch it, like, for real, uh, this Saturday. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, come and check it out. Um, but again, uh, do that. And for people who are watching this on YouTube, uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash primekai, P-R-M-E. P-R-I-M-E-C-A-Y-E-S, as it's written on your screen right there. Um, please come around. We'd love to have you. Um, but uh, I'm going to give everyone an outro, and you can say a final statement as well um, while you're doing this. Um, we'll start with our good friend, Demon Mama. Demon Mama. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me on here. Uh, as for final thoughts on this topic, again, I simply challenge those who are skeptical of what I've said in the audience to please um, look a little bit deeper into it because uh, you don't really have to look very far to find the direct comparisons between the actions right now of the Republican Party, especially the authoritarian wing, the, the Trump wing of the of the Republican Party and previous fascistic governments in the past. It is not exaggeration. There's a reason why literally everyone from liberals to leftists has been pointing this out. It's just a fact and it's not hard to verify. And uh, I just want to say I really appreciate being here. If you liked hearing me, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Demon Mama on YouTube. You can come to my website, demonmama.com. Afterwards, I will be doing a Q&A and open debate session. So if you didn't like what you heard or if you did, come on by the panel and uh, and I'd be totally open to debate with you because I will be chilling specifically for if anyone had huge problems with my takes and wants to debate with me. And you're welcome. That includes everyone on this panel. Uh, thank you so much for having me on Prime. Once again, Demon Mama, thanks for being here. Yeah, um, I always, always enjoy talking uh, uh, with you, Mama. I'm really glad that uh, she came back. Um, <laughs> she's a fun panelist, a difficult panelist to wrangle, but yeah, a fun panelist nonetheless. Um, but yeah, uh, Team Mama is great. Um, and to all my panelists, um, if you have a certain link that you want people to follow you at, right, um, make sure to throw it into my chat. Um, uh, something like your Twitter or something that I might not have, make sure you throw it into my chat. I want people to be able I- to... Uh, I I can't log into Twitch right now, so maybe somebody can grab uh, Hey It's Vadim and throw that into. Uh, so so sorry, I just I can't do it for some reason. So that would be great if somebody could do that. Sure, sure. Um, okay. Uh, well, if you could uh, maybe throw in the group DM, um, and then we could. Uh, uh, yeah, no problem. Um, but uh, uh, well, while we're waiting on uh, that, we'll only skip to uh, counterpoints just for a second. Counterpoints, uh, thanks for coming through. As always, uh, <laughs> another very passionate soul here. Uh, <laughs> uh, counterpoints, I think uh, you did better uh, than the other time. <laughs> Last time you were involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I largely just like stroked out on the inside rather than on the outside. It was, uh, you know, still, still, I think I took some time off of my life, but I, I still, uh, I, I hope I didn't do as much yelling. 
So, um, no, th thank you very much for having me. If you're not following Prime right now, you're wrong. Uh, if you have a sub to give and you're not giving it to Prime right now, you're wrong. Um, if you're not appreciative of the fact that he was able to organize, uh, you know, Vosh's inaugural panel show coming back into the into the fray, uh, then I think that's uh, that you're you're very unappreciative, and I don't like you as a person. I'm making a moral judgment about who you are. Um, so, uh, Vosh asks, what do you what do we do? Um, I think the Dean's point that media literacy, teaching people how to understand propaganda, to understand when they're being propagandized, to understand the difference between rhetoric and fact, um, and how to corroborate facts is incredibly important. I, I think that's something that we could do literally in the public education system, considering how much uh, media is now influencing our lives. Um, mm -hmm. I think that ties in well to, I'll, I'll try to make this quick. Um, I think that ties in well to civic education, basically educating people on political structures, honestly, um, you know, communism, fascism, uh, you know, liberalism, uh, republicanism, talking about all these definitions and having a, a, a hopefully a healthy defense of the liberal democratic societies that we live in. Um, and then rhetorical strategies. I would be very happy, Bosch, if you wanted to another time, we could talk about rhetoric and the, what I th think the good rhetoric would be that would reach the right. But I'll leave it there for my closing. Uh, for my shout outs, my name is Connor. I run a YouTube channel named Counterpoints. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm a four year uh, veteran of the Marine Corps person other than Grunt. I'm a four year veteran of law enforcement. Um, I did three years in patrol, one year in the schools. I also have a four year degree in business, history and art. And uh, basically, I'm, I'm a centrist. I piss off lefties. I piss off righties. I piss off everybody at all times. Um, so sometimes I'll be boys with everybody, and sometimes I'll be making everybody incredibly mad. There's two ways to find me. Number one, hop on YouTube, type in counterpoints. I'm the second channel after Contra. Number two, hop on Twitter, type in counterpoints, C-O-N-O-R-P-O-I-N-T-S, C-O-N-O-R-P-O-I-N-T-S. Follow me, and my YouTube channel is linked there. And with that, I'll shut up, and I will thank every single person here, including Lecture Fan, uh, for being here tonight and, uh, you know, Having having a good debate. Okay, uh, the team. Uh, you want to shout yourself out now? Sure, I did put the uh, my channel into your chat, by the way. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm Vadim, otherwise known as Hey, it's Vadim, the artist formerly known as Creationist Cat, and um, I am just I'm just gonna chill. I'm not gonna talk about what we were talking about before. I have a video that I've spent uh, practically two months on which is probably going to be titled um, The Beanie Man Cometh, The Lost Tim Pool Tapes. I really wanted to go with Beanie Bloodbath, but I think I'd get into trouble for that. Um, actually, Vosh, I, 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 I don't want to, you did a fantastic job with, with uh, Mr. Poole, but I do kind of challenge you a bit on one thing that you said about him. So I hope you get a chance to watch that video. It's got Anthony Fantano. It's got Tom Nichols. It's got We're in Hell. And there, I, I have come to drop fucking bombs in this video. There are videos that he has deleted for good reason. They make him look absolutely horrible. He has threatened to litigate people over things that he says in these videos that he's very much lying about. Just giving you guys like a little taste of it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's just gonna have a lot of bombs, more bombs than, I don't know, you'd find in a Dave Rubin stand-up set. And it's, um, you know, going to be nothing short of a nonstop pleasure and a sheer sensation. I had a really great time on this panel. It was lovely talking with Vosh for the first time. Demon Mama, I'd be, I don't know if you're even listening right now, but I, I would be totally down to join you after this. Um, and I really want to thank Prime for having me on once again. This is an interesting uh, discussion. I want to thank uh, both um, CounterPoints and, and Mr. Lecture Fan for being brave enough to... Uh, especially lecture fan and look i i know we don't see eye to eye but hey I'll, I'll give you props for one thing being the one man inside this uh like uh, you know just you're, you're right right now you're in the center of my screen you're just enveloped in leftism uh and uh that's 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 that can't be easy so um you know props to you for that then i guess i don't have anything else to say other than once again sub to my channel hey it's vadim you could also look up creationist cat and you could be you'll still find it so yeah thumbs up to you guys i love you all and um I, I, yeah just i love you just not in a weird way okay thank you so much you're I'm, welcome. I, I prefer to be loved in a weird way. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we could talk about that. Okay. All right. Um, let's go, uh, uh, Doobie. Uh, Doobie, um, you uh, brought fear, loathing, and hatred uh, to my channel, um, uh, as I expected. Uh, you always deliver. 
Um, thank you for, for terrorizing us all just for one more night. Uh, DB, uh, go ahead. We have an aggressive typist. Oh, no. It's an aggressive typist. Um, okay. Um, so I, I just want to... Okay. I'm going to shill, of course, politics uh, Discord server. Discord.gg slash politics if you want to find me. Um, and it's discord.gg slash politics. The greatest server on Discord, by the way. Um, but... I'd also like to use my closing statement to check in on Lecture Frame because I'm I'm honestly like I, like I said earlier, I'm not a leftist. I'm not a socialist. I'm not even a fucking conservative. I can be pretty fashy sometimes, to be honest with you. Right? That's that's the truth. But right, that being that being the case, um, I feel like I live in the same reality as like Vosh. Or we're living in the same world. Right? We, we can talk about things, we can have conversations. And, and and we can at least agree on like basic shit, but it feels like you're off in the fucking outer space somewhere, floating around, and we're speaking to you, and it's just going over your head, and I'm so fucking confused because I'd love to believe that this is like I, that, that you genuinely feel this way, right? That that Vash is wrong when he says that this is like some kind of game you're playing. We're just gonna repeat the bullshit, knowing it's bullshit because that that's a good strategy. I'd like to believe that's not true, but. Like, you posted on your Twitter, like, 10 hours ago, uh, you know, something like, you know, uh, you're going on another Twitch debate panel, should be an easy win. But I feel like tonight, like, you barely spoke. And when you did, you it was, it was like, it, it was totally irrational nonsense, right? So I, 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 I heard all the stuff about Electric Fan. I'm sure you're a nice person. It's just... I, I'm I'm I, I'm really confused. Is all I I, I want to believe your brain doesn't work this way. It seems like it does. I'd like to give you some benefit the benefit of the doubt. So please just tell me why I'm wrong here or later. We can t whatever the fuck you want to do, okay? Because I'm actually really concerned. I, I'm. <laughs> it feels like you literally have brain worms, right? So so please, today, tomorrow, whenever it is, please we need to talk about this because because I I'm, I'm actually concerned about you. And thanks for having me on Prime. I love you guys. Of course. Um, all right. Well, uh, um, lecture fan, <laughs> friend. Okay. Well, Doobie, Doobie just exposed himself as being completely ignorant about American politics and how 75 million, probably closer actually to 125 million um, Americans feel. And so, you know, I'm actually the only one that's actually connected to reality out of this whole entire panel. And it's been that way. I'm used to going 1v8 on these Twitch panels and winning them. And so if you guys want more of it, I'm LCTR fan on every social media platform. Uh, I go by Lecture Fan, but it's spelled LCTR fan. Every platform, I tweet a lot. The tweets are amazing. And um, you guys know I'm right. Everybody else knows I'm right. Everybody's mad because they can't handle the truth. And so come check out the Lecture Fan channel. And thank you, Prime. Um, so, uh, Lecture Fan, I'm always a, a appreciative of you, uh, coming on. Um, uh, it is a rare treat, but I do actually consider it a treat. I want you to know that, um, Lecture Fan, uh, uh coming in and, uh, to a, to a, to a shark pit, not shark pit, no, uh, shark tank, that's what it is, um, or, or a viper tank, whatever, um, and, uh, dealing with all, with all these people, um, do appreciate that, honestly, not everyone can. Okay, uh, next, we will go to Eris. Eris, thank you for coming through um, and joining us. We do uh, appreciate your um, uh, uh, your passion that you brought uh, through this, your perspective. Um, Eris, tell everyone where to find you. Uh-oh. Er Eris? Streamer. Oh, hold on. Maybe, is she uh, still in the, uh, hold on. Because she, she had an issue. Uh, she still. She had, her, she had her AI turned off. Oh no, she's on. there. Uh, Eris, you're uh, okay. Uh, like Eris, if you're here. talking, we cannot hear you. So we'll we'll come back to you, Eris, but we can't hear you at this moment. Okay. Uh, uh, next, uh, we will go to the homie, Dylan Burns. Dylan Burns. I, I can't hold. I can't hold it anymore. I I I came here simply because I I wanted to challenge Lecture Fan. I just couldn't. He he was too smart for me. He was too big brain. He fought on the side of God today. And even even as a child of God, he was just more godly than I could ever be. And I just came here because I just wanted to try to bask in his glory. And it was just too bright for me. I, I the I got so close to the sun that it singed my fingertips. I have it is impossible for me, for me to continue to grow my fingernails. He has shown me shown me the way. I will continue to deny, of course, because I I I I bathe in my ignorance as they left the on the internet 
but I just want to say that uh, you, you must support Lecter Fan through all, all the social medias, all the ways, because he is truly a, a brilliant mind of conservative thought. He Did you know he's the number one conservative streamer on Twitch? It is out of this world, the type of content he, he does. <laughs> so I just want to make sure you all know to go support him, because if if who's going to debunk the grifters like me, Vosh, Demon Mama, and the rest of us on here, besides hardcore truth tellers, like lecture fan and that is lctr fan on twitch just for all of you out there but for all of you out there who are still lefty grifters like myself uh, i want to give you all a secret cheat code if you go to dylan burns tv which is d-y-l-a-n-b-u-r-n-s tv on twitch and you follow me and i get enough follows and subscriptions on youtube which is the same thing on youtube i think bernie actually might have a shot still of becoming president I think he, uh, he actually, uh, through, through the uh, same thing that Mike Pence would have used to impeach Trump, it actually appoints him as the current president of the United States. Um, if you don't do it, you're a fake lefty. Um, you are a counter Intel pro, uh, just like everybody else on uh, on the platform, just like the serfs, just like Hassan, just like uh, the rest of them, all counter Intel pro infiltrators. Okay, Rude. I just want to let you all know that. So, uh, yeah, this is Dylan Burns TV, uh, number one arm smuggler on Twitch. Um, wow, uh, Dylan Burns. Uh, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on, uh, Dylan. Um, you're definitely uh, one of our uh, funnest uh, panelists when we ever uh, ha- have the pleasure of having you here. Um, of course, um, Dylan has the Hippie TV podcast that he does prior to 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm sure he didn't forget to do that. Um, I, feel, I mean, he just knew I would do that for him because I got him. I got you, buddy. Um, but Dylan, once again, really appreciate you being around here. All right, next, uh, we have... Vosh, Vosh, um, gotta say, very much appreciate uh, you coming through. Um, we had never met before, we had never talked before, um, but um, we decided to come on my very humble <laughs> uh, channel. Um, and, uh, you know, the uh, crowd followed you. Um, it's been a big boon uh, to this stream. I gotta just say, I'm, I'm thankful for uh, the opportunity to have you here. I hope you enjoyed your time here, and I hope uh, that maybe we can have you in the future as well. Vosh. Yeah. You don't need to butter my biscuit. No more humble than I. Yeah, I had a fun time. Thanks for having me on. A um, couple final points, because these are meant to be closing statements as well. Um, Dylan was talking about meeting the material needs of Americans to disincentivize their movement towards fascism. And that's, I think that's the standard Marxist line. I mean, material conditions, you know, you advance the, the you know, the material comfort of the working class. They're less inclined towards reactionary politics. But I wonder about that in the current climate. It feels like very often people are radicalized to the far right, not because of their material conditions, but because of culture war identity bullshit. Like getting convinced that BLM is going to raid the white suburbs or that trans sports ladies are going to outperform your daughter, whatever bullshit they believe. So I don't know. Um, I enjoyed the panel. Thank you all very much. Um, Vadim, it's the first time I've spoken to you, and we've talked before extensively. So yes. It was nice to have that opportunity. Lecture fan, I hope, you're... I hope we could do it again. Uh, likewise. Lecture fan, your indefatigable uh, optimism and tenacity are an inspiration to me. Um, I know that things aren't easy, but perk up. They'll get better eventually. <laughs> um, yeah, I had fun. Uh, I'm Vosh on everything. And uh, you can figure out how to spell that yourself. Um, if you're a progressive or a lefty, you should follow me for obvious reasons. And if you're a conservative, you should follow me anyway, because that's the only way we're ever going to de-seat Hassan as the number one political streamer in the Western world, okay? We're, well, I'm, I'm the number two horse you have to back. You need to, if you got a grudge, okay, I'm the, I'm the one to pick, okay? All right. Well, um, I, I uh, clarify, I'm not a Marxist. I love this country, and I will not have my views associated with it. <laughs> uh, I back the people who come on my uh, my channel. So I don't know. Uh, that's my vote right there. Um, so I really do appreciate uh, Bosch. Yes, um, we definitely will reach out for the future. Um, next, we will have uh, Eris. We will um, give her another. Is it working shot. now? Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. Hey. Awesome. Welcome. Yay. Thank you. Okay. So I do think early in the conversation, I got straw man heavily. I'm not a super aggressive personality, so I didn't get a chance to chime in to defend myself. Um, but if you'd like to hear my takes, I'm going to stay on like later in the panel and I'll be on tomorrow for 
uh, the Amazon Lily as well. And you can always join my server where you get to hear my takes and plenty of other, you know, um, strange takes. Uh, the big thing about my server is people can join and leave their echo chambers, but in a safe and heavily moderated environment. This is not like some free speech haven. Um, this is heavily moderated. It's but you can still, but it still has a diverse amount of ideas. Now, in CC, you've got to play nice. You've got to be charitable. And that can be hard for some people, but there's a time and place for it and everything. And But that enables people to learn and to grow and to feel, um, to feel comfortable to be able to do those things. So if you want to join for any of those reasons, if you think that that community is for you, or if you just want to join because we have a 60-40 women to men ratio um and you just really want to meet you know your super intellectual 4000 iq gf um be sure to join calliopian club so just go to discord.gg slash calliopian club um, and we'd love to have you i'm putting a and link thanks for having me here prime by the way absolutely i'm putting uh her link in chat at least i think i just did um, yeah, I did. Um, so uh, uh, check it out there. Uh, check out that Discord link there. Uh, an exclamation point uh, poll, uh, P-O-L, po or politics, um, to get the dis uh, politics Discord server uh, link as well for uh, doobies. Um, and doobies was basically the server she was warning you against. I mean, let's be honest, right? Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Um, well, I like their safe, yeah, their true. safe sister. <laughs> All right. Um, so again, uh, to everyone uh, here, uh, we're going to continue the stream right now. Um, we're going to do our walk-on panel. Honest members like you, yes, you can be a part of the uh, uh, panel. Uh, can give your opinion about anything that just happened here. Um, uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, remember you can uh, join this uh, channel, twitchtv primekai P R I M E C A Y E S, as it's spelled on your screen. Come by, give me a follow, and give all these beautiful people a follow. Uh, they've been uh, amazing. Uh, they, they all provide amazing content. I'm so happy that they spent a bit of their time, their energy, their passion with all of us. We'd love to have them uh, join us for the walk on panel, but if not, that's okay. Really appreciate you uh, you all being here. I'd be ecstatic to have you all in the future. Have a good one. Bye. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Catch you. Peace. Later. Bye -bye. Yeah. Fun, guys. <laughs> I really